Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, and so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show. Booyah! When you come in, you guys are going to all sit on the floor. Your parents will have chairs. You guys will sit on the floor, and you got you got to be quiet. You got to be quiet. Can you guys be quiet for an hour? No. no. You got to do it. All right? All right. We can. All right, there you go. That's me. <laughs> Coaching Little League. What? what? Laying it down, laying it down to the soldiers. We'll Gotta be quiet. We'll have a full uh, package that Mike put together. Good job by Mike coming down. Mike uh, is as co- Mike was cocky about his shots. The TV backs it up, man. <laughs> I got- shot the living crap Mike's out like, of it. I am the best sports <laughs> shooter well, hey, that's inter- ever lived. That's interesting that you did that for that. But when I played softball last year, you know, you missed my best catch of the, of the night. So be what did I tell you last night? But what was the big difference between last year when we did this and this year when we did this? That you had a wireless mic. And the camera and the worked. better camera. It's the same camera. The camera just didn't work last no, year. No, it oh, did. Yeah. He figured it out how to work. make it work, and, and, but and, it was no, already too late. We literally late. got a new camera. We and, literally got a new yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. And, and last year, he didn't know if he was going to be here this year. <laughs> yeah, right. There's a lot more, <laughs> lot more confidence <laughs> yeah. like, I shoot coming this. out from Mike. I did shoot the crap out of it. Also, just telling everyone right yeah. now, I have no internet right now. I'm literally a useless sitting body. I might as well be out on the panel because you mean, you I can't look at – I just can't connect to the internet. Well, There's no internet. Did you we have just internet say that for the we're show. We're useless because we don't have internet. No, I'm saying I'm useless. You can't be like, hey, Mike, look up a stat. Well, I can't what look about up your phone? You, you can look up, up on your phone. Could you imagine going back to a world with no internet? You think you survive? Maybe that'd be a great world. I'm man. just telling y'all. Don't ask me to look up anything. This is WKYC. The phones are. Let's right face now. it. The phones this are destroying stupid. our brain. Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers just did it. Guys, you, come on. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> he went in the no, darkness. No. Wow. Listen, he did. Listen, he listen. did. Y'all can't do that. If the internet goes out, it does not come back in. How do we work at a TV station? I can't get on this stupid Wi-Fi. This is absurd. By the way, speaking of Aaron Rodgers, he is apparently he's starting like some new vet business. And he is crowdsourcing to raise money. The guy's made multi-million dollars. May, who knows how much money he's made between commercials and salaries. Rich people spend other people's money. No, they say. love doing that. Yeah. And people are idiots and suckers and, and give them do. money. And yeah. you know what? If you give Aaron Rodgers money or if you give, give it to uh, me. a rich politician money or you give whatever, like anybody that's filthy rich and you're handing them money, like, like these television uh, evangelists, those guys, <laughs> like – you deserve to have your money taken because you're a sucker. I, you you're know, an idiot. There's a shout out to the televangelists. By the way, uh, if, if the internet goes out, chaos will occur. Two weeks later, everybody will be in a post-apocalyptic yeah, world. Yeah, it's going to be Walking Dead because, without the zombies. Yes, because the only the only real thing that you have in the bank that's imaginary. That's a number. Of, <laughs> that's true. Like so, it, think about when rich people try to go to the bank and be like, oh. uh, "Yeah, can yeah." The only thing that's about, it. That's, and that's, it. that's how the Russians or the Chinese are going to take over. Yeah, that, that's how know? it goes down. But yeah, but uh, you know, uh, you know and, on that happy news, note, other news, we got tons to get to today where we got uh, later in the show. Uh, we're going to find out if we know anything about the NBA draft, which is happening at some point soon. I don't know if any of us know exactly when it's happening. Uh, we'll get to baseball in the second hour of the show. My whole little league team will be here. They're excited to come watch the show today. And Gavin Williams is making his major league debut for the Guardians, the Guardians' first-round pick in the 2021 draft. Uh, will be called up, you know, obviously, Logan Allen and Tanner Bybee are here already. Gavin Williams is, is at least, uh, most people think, is the best of the bunch. And those two guys have been really good so far. So with Tristan McKenzie going on the injured list, uh, he's going to be up. But, Mike, you got something for us to start the show, right? Yeah, I'm sorry that my mood just been kicked down the can. I, I have no. Let's internet. go. But, the, the internet. Get really shake it up. Let's I go. can't do my job with that internet. Listen, you so, got, you got your, you, me and you wearing the same shirt. You got to yeah. use some of my energy, bro. Dude, we, we don't need the I, internet. I lived 30 years of my life with no internet, essentially. When Let's your whole go. show's built on the internet and you can't get on the internet, use your phone. 
So what are we doing? Let's just let's so we're gonna get moving. to it. But we have you got minutes. Shouldn't be choked throat. Don't throw off. Like <laughs> yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't get on. I can't get on Twitter. I can't see the rundown. Might, I can't got, see my got, email. You I can't see my answers. I can't got see my notes. You got a phone, Mike. This man got minutes. It's not the same. Not the same. But we do have something from last week that we've been saving specially for today. Oh my God. You got minutes. No, we got we got something special for you today, Tyvis. Last Thursday we had Bucky Brooks on the show. You familiar with Bucky Brooks? I am familiar with Bucky Brooks. Steve, what? play the clip. We have a guy in the show. He, he <laughs> rotates in. Uh, well, do, do you remember Tyvis Powell? He played at Ohio State. He was the uh, national. I do, I do, I do, I do. Yeah, throws, I do, I do remember. Twice a week here. Uh, do you remember your scouting report on Tyvis? Because we'll definitely tell him. Like, please tell us you were. In his mind, he was I the wish. number one overall prospect in the class, <laughs> and he was a travesty. He went undrafted, but. I I, I, I wish that I could pull out. A old report on Tyvis. I don't have a report, but uh, it's funny because here's the thing, and I can agree with Tyvis. We are always legends in our own mind <laughs> right. as the years get away from when we play. Like it is, it is always great. The only thing that brings you back to reality is when you watch those old highlights and you look at those big old shoulder pads. And you're like, you know what? I might not have been as sweet as I thought, but I'm gonna let people think that I was a great player back in the day. <laughs> Yeah, Tyvis, we have the big. that's his uh, national championship MVP trophy. <laughs> yeah, he, in, in studio. In studio. He doesn't let us forget yeah, that. Uh, in studio. Yeah, so he, Tyvis that's is a great guy. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yep. That's unbelievable. That's an unbelievable flex. Yeah. I'm gonna bring my trophy. And oh. drop it. <laughs> <laughs> it just left it. Yeah, it's it's just like, left it's like, it's like I don't even need this. I got replicas. This is just one of my trophies. It's like his business card. He's, he's, on, he's on two days a week, Bucky. We do five days, ten hours a week. He's on four of the ten hours, but we cannot do a show without his trophy in the background. Listen, I'll have hey, Mike you, was just dogging you. I, right listen, there. I'll have you know. He broke down his timesheets. When I actually three and a half hours out of the ten. You know, you know what the crazy thing is? Is yeah. when I go back and look at myself and like. My my uniform, I had so much swag. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I was so cold. Would you have had that <laughs> same swag if you had to wear those old school, huge shoulder pads? I wasn't wearing no old school. Oh, I'm saying, look at, would look you at have that. Had... Look at that. Get my look at my swag. It's my San Fran swag. We was rocking. San Fran swag. Hold on, let me brighten it. up. I mean, it's hard to ha not have swag in those uniforms. Let me see. Those are pretty sweet. Look at that. Yeah. Ooh. Is that number 30, Tyvis? Is that 30? Oh, oh, he's getting a text. That's some TikTok stuff. Oh, I don't TikTok. even know what it is. Ooh, that boy drippy. Got the sweet rag. Ooh, that boy cold. You know, you, know, you know how I knew I looked good that day? Because mm, I, I got dressed like one of the first DBs dressed. Yeah. And all the DBs was like, where you get that stuff from? And I'm like, oh, you know, I got the, the little socks over there. Where you got to get you a bunch of socks, crunch them yeah. up. So everybody no, but I'm saying, my, if you had rim. to wear the old school shoulder pads that were huge, no, would I, you have still, still no, had No, I would have got way. the quarterback pads. Okay. I would have asked to get the quarterback pads and because I wanted, still, I wanted to move. And would you still have the same jersey number? 23 or would you would you get? Yeah, would you get another? If I could go back in the time and pick any number, I would have picked number two. If you play DB and you were number two in college, yeah, you yeah. that deal. Yeah, you are sweet. that deal. What, you cannot wear two is a good player. You cannot wear number two in the secondary and not be good. There's there, it's, it's, it's got to be a number two somewhere that sucks. I don't think it is. I, I, I listen. Yeah, you no. if you were Dion started it, then you got some. You got Charles Woodson. You got Michael. So Jenkins, why did you Marshawn. not take two then? Uh, because number two was taken when I was first got there. By and, who? By Christian Bryan, he actually went to Glenville. Actually, Christian was number two at safety. Mm. Once he left, he didn't go to the NFL, did he? He did. He went to he went to the St. Louis Rams. Uh. He got drafted to the Rams. But after he left, um, I had made my play with number twenty three in the team up north game. So it was like so you couldn't switch that exactly because yeah. I actually wanted to go to number one. Number one was the number that I always wanted. Uh, okay. Yeah. But, all right. Well. Let's go to the, let's 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 talk some more football, guys, because the season is right around the corner. Believe it or not, it's about five weeks till training camp starts, give mm -hmm. or take. The Hall of Fame game. What's the date? The exact date of the Hall of Fame? August third. August third. I mean, it's already June twenty first. The only reason I know that because I got I probably got pregame post game. There you go. <laughs> nothing like do, nothing like doing post game for the Hall of Fame game. That's yeah, exciting. Not, yeah. At least you're getting paid. That's good. Uh, according to Jay, not enough, but. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jay lives in TV world, man. <laughs> the rest of us, 
that are on here, we've lived in radio world for most of our lives. We understand there's a big difference in pay between Jay, radio and Jay TV. Jay looked at them numbers and said, this is peasant money. <laughs> Jay's like, I wouldn't do anything for that money. Man, I'll be like, man, I'll eat a sandwich and come do a gra cut grass and do that. For that Jay money. said he wouldn't even do a hit section for that much money. Right. Uh, but with everything, you know, listen, by the way, I'm going to throw this out there for a second, and I forgot this before the show, but I want to mention it now. Uh, this morning, my podcast, my Bet Rivers podcast, it's going to be out at some point this afternoon. I spoke with Ross Tucker from the Ross Tucker, Ross, Ross Tucker football podcast. Ross played in the NFL as an offensive lineman, and he said to me, and you could see more details on this in the podcast later, but I want to bring it up real quick now, Mike. He said to me, he thinks the Browns absolutely need, desperately, DeAndre Hopkins. Who he said says, this? Ross Tucker. So well, we'll, pay attention we'll, there, will you? I'll have to check in. We'll yeah. have to, I'll listen to uh, yeah. li the podcast. Listen more he reason. says, this idea, he, and, and Ross loves Cleveland. He's not a Cleveland hater. He t comes on in Cleveland all the time. He says the Browns, have, he thinks the Browns fans are the best in the country. And he said, but people saying that the Browns wide receiving core is fine. They're wrong. You and I have been on this, G, all along. He says they must get Hopkins. I see it either way. I'm good either way. Still to this day. Um, it, they if got they, one if proven, they get him, great. The if Browns have one great. proven wide receiver. That's true. I, I said that. I said the same thing. <laughs> I, I, you know, there's a... You know, I, th this per this th this permeates all moves, though. Like, yeah. if you think about it, it's not just a Browns topic. We just arguing back and forth about the Cavs the other day. Yeah. Like, you know, people like so human nature is humans do not like change. That's a fact. Yes. If you got especially humans in Cleveland. Yes. If you got yeah. a if you got an eight year old, the eight year old will to wear the same shirt. Every single day yeah. until you say, look, bro, you can't wear that shirt every day <laughs> or eat the uh, same food every day or eat the same food. Right. Like, and, and so in Cleveland, we, we, we lull ourselves into being like, okay, well, we don't, we don't need that person because you know, when you're, when you're tribal and when you bond together, you say, Hey, look, it's us versus them. So if you're in the circle and we drafted you and we've seen you play before, I'd rather have that person because I believe in my mind, I have this place where that person has unlimited potential. We right. just need to stay the course. Right. Sometimes I learned it in divorce. Sometimes I, I I saw my wife on the internet, knew I was gonna get married. My mom was like, "Dang, you crazy!" I was like, "Well, why would you believe that I'm gonna marry her for the first time when I saw her?" But I knew when I was gonna divorce my other wife too. It go both ways. Like, <laughs> why would you not believe it now? Like, I knew I was like, oh, "Yeah, this is a bad decision." Like, so, yeah, no, like. No, there's this mental gymnastics. Sometimes you should just pull the trigger and make the move. Like, well, right. see, the thing is, the, this is the thing for me, is that DeAndre Hopkins definitely helps you win more games, and that's so. Why would you not sign him? There is, now, there is no reason. There is no reason. He doesn't want to come here. The only, for reason, the I only, don't know. the only reason that you wouldn't sign him would be because you believe in what you have, and if and you want to keep some money left over just in case some emergencies happen where somebody gets hurt. Well, That's the only two reasons. What? Like who you who you need this money for? I don't know. If Nick Chubb got hurt. In six games, if they, if they in six games, I don't know. Miles they, Garrett got into another accident. They ain't got I don't know. What, Maybe something got, crazy like that. If they ain't got what they're gonna get in six games, they yeah. gonna be. I'm not worried about spending. Everything's on the line this year. Like I agree. Yeah. Why would I? That, this is somebody explain this to me. Why would I sit on this panel today at this job and worry about the fiscal responsibility? Of a, it's so, insane. to bring somebody else in to take my job. <laughs> I'm going to fight for more wages and, right. and then they can you and go yeah. get another person, give him more benefits and they give him more salary. <laughs> what kind of craziness is that? Why was the fans, fans do it all the time? Why would we save money for uh, it? It's nuts. You, you play DeAndre Hopkins is the only free agent out there that makes to me a significant difference for the Browns. They're a better team with him. The Browns, in my mind, have to win double-digit games or everybody's gone. You know, so even if they – I'm not going to say playoffs because if they went 10-7 and seven and somehow lost the tiebreaker to not make the playoffs, so, so nine and I'm eight, not firing Nine anybody. and eight, they get fired. No, double-digit wins. Nine, to me, done. 
Done. Don double digit, everybody go. Because double digit wins, you should be in the playoffs. So ninety percent. When playoffs. you say everybody's going, bye. Who, who? Everybody. I think you're firing everybody. Barry. <laughs> Barry Man, too. Everybody. I'm canning everybody hey, if they don't. Hey, go hey. If that's the case, then they might as well go all in. So that's right. So <laughs> yeah, go so get all in. Stop that's effing around. Go here. all in. If that's the case. See, see, <laughs> see, this is a company like anybody else. Yeah. Do you know CEOs get get canned in six months? Oh yeah. They like you. You got six months to turn around these financial statements. Let's go. You could have been sued. You could have had regulations. You could have had to shut three plants down. They said, no, we, we brought you in for a reason. You got 18 months to figure it out or we find another CEO. Do you know how much we paying you? Like the thought process that this is the Boy Scouts is crazy. Like if Ryan Day is catching smoke like that, and he only loses to Michigan. <laughs> if he loses to Michigan again, you got to fire him. Lose, 100%. It, it, it. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's Ryan Day. And these guys win 10, 12 games and go to the college football player yeah. playoff like well, it's their job. They, most of those games they win are meet or anybody, any yes. coach can win those games. So so for can us you stop with that. Oh yeah. I, if I'm, I were the co- I'm, I'm if I were the coach of Ohio State, I am winning those games. I actually do think that's, that's not true. that's not true. That is because you I would have I, know, you, I would have great assistance that I would You know how I know that's not job. true? Yeah. Because the year before I got there, they went six and seven. Yeah, that was one year that was coming off the way Trestle ended. That they was, was on st- had the same that guy. Was, they what, they had the same guys. By the way, Luke Fickle has he done a great job other places? Yes, he's a he's an excellent coach. It was a weird year. That absolutely was absolutely yes, yes. That was a weird year with unusual circumstances. And all he all Bull has to do they win six and seven. All, all, I'm all Bull has to do is scare the living hell out of these people. Yeah, just like Urban Meyer did. <laughs> like all that's no, all it takes. You can't do that. What you mean? They hop in the transfer portal. But yeah, listen, it, or you just turn over and just be Dion. I got money. You want to go to the league? You can't talk to yeah, these. You can't talk to these kids like that no more. Well, all right, but listen. The, the bottom line is. <laughs> DeAndre Hopkins makes the team better. And too many of our fans, here's what's happened here, G. Our fans don't think we're going to get DeAndre Hopkins. Yes. So they have conned themselves into believing that it doesn't matter, that DPJ is just as good at this point, or who, oh, Moore, who just said as good. that? I, I'm saying that's I've what fans of, are no, Anybody that man. tells you DPJ is as good as D Hopkins, I'll tell you this. I've heard that. Every single <laughs> fan out there that says we don't need DeAndre Hopkins. Is jumping for joy if they sign him, yeah. without exception. Facts. Yes. But they want to convince themselves we don't need it, him because they don't think he's going to it, sign. It, it's like you want to ask this girl to go to the prom. You yeah. know she's a little bit over your league. Uh, yeah. So instead of being right. like when she tells you no or I'll think about it, you're sitting there saying, okay, well if she says yes, I'm going to be happy. If she says no, I'm going to say I never really wanted to That's go with right. her anyway. Hundred percent. I, I wanted accurate. to go with Susie. She's a six. But right now DeAndre Hopkins is not on the Browns. So, the Vegas lines in terms of who's going to win the AFC North are out. Mm-hmm. And obviously, DeAndre Hopkins for the, for the moment is a non-factor. Here are the, uh, the current AFC North title odds. The Bengals are plus 120, so they're close to even money there. The Ravens are plus 275. The Browns are plus 360. And the, is that 360? Mm-hmm. Hard 360. And the Steelers are plus 550. Yep. All right, so the Bengals are a fairly <laughs> significant favorite in the AFC North. Uh, but they're not minus money, which I'm sure like Jacksonville in the AFC South might be minus money. The, the Chiefs rest. are minus. Jacksonville is plus 100. Jacksonville is right even, <laughs> even money. Uh, so there you go. Uh, when you look at that, guys, should the Bengals be the clear favorite in the North? And are the Browns appropriately placed in third, in third place? Unfortunately, yes and yes. The, the Bengals, like they've been, they've proven it. It was the Super Bowl, go to the AFC Championship game, um, and they play the Chiefs very well. They match up well with the Chiefs. Um, they 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 go out and play uh, really inspired against the Chiefs. And some will argue one um, you know late hit out of bounds. Yeah, you, 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 you going overtime. You're going again. in overtime yeah. again. Yeah. So. I don't got a problem with that. If you're going to beat them, and I know people say this all the time, but the Browns, but the Browns have their number. Listen, stop that. I get it. You, you They won the four and one against the, the Bengals, but at the end of the day, you just don't play the Bengals 18 times during the season. You play other people too. So maybe you can save some of that for the Ravens. Yeah. So the Ravens at number two, I also do not have a problem with that. Just for the simple fact that the Browns, like the Browns, have to prove it, right? They got to prove it. I don't have a problem with them; those guys putting them at third, because if you look at the roster, they got talent. 
but you gotta put it together. So no, I don't got a problem. Now I I do like the, I do agree with them being over Pittsburgh because I think when people start putting uh, Pickett and all the other dudes over, oh, I'm like, no, that's not it. That's not what we're talking about here. They, the the Steelers are not like your father's Steelers. No. Like, but I'll say but they're this, always competitive. But but then again, you yeah. came in last place last that's year, right. so if people want to <laughs> say that too. Well, you gotta prove it, bro. Tyvis, what say you? Well, I mean, I look at it. Yes, yeah, Cincinnati deserves to be um, in the favorites just for all the reasons that G. Bush said. But, I mean, yeah. as far as the rest of the order goes, I mean, you got to look at it from, you know, if you take the AFC and you just split it by, you know, positions. So, you say the best quarterback. Obviously, the Bengals have that. The best running back, you'll say the Browns have that. Best receiving core, you'll say Bengals. Tight end. Baltimore. Baltimore for yeah. sure. Uh, offensive line. It's between Baltimore and the Browns. Yeah, it's close. Uh, D line, who would you say? Mm, Better I mean, be the Browns this year after how much money they spent. Yeah, but you, I don't know that you can say it going into the season until we see them do it, right? It was so bad last year. I think we all think they they have. The I think they got to the be potential best. to be the best. You said so. You would so, so you slight edge. You give it to the Browns just on paper. On paper, yeah. On I paper, would. I think I would put the Bengals ahead by a hair because it's proven cohesive unit. But I expect the Browns to be ahead of them once the season goes. Linebackers, we'd say Baltimore probably. Linebackers might be. I don't know if any. Uh, the ba- might be the Bengals. I might say it might could be the Bengals. The linebackers. The Bengals still kept. They kept Pratt Jermaine and Pratt Wilson's and Logan Wilson. Good. I don't think any team has two linebackers. And sec- secondary that. wise, who y'all who y'all riding with? Uh, I like the Browns. Probably secondary. the Browns. I would go secondary Browns. Yeah. So out of all of those, we say the Browns got what three out of what nine that I just said, three out of nine, potentially. Yeah. So I think, since I think I'm since not ready to go D line on the Browns yet. But I so think you got two out of nine. I, I, it's tough. It's a tough call. I mean, we're projecting. All right, I'll say the Browns first D line. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll say because I got to project forward. So so, yes. so with Baltimore, so, three out of nine. so with Baltimore, they have we gave them line. No, we gave tight them end. tight end. And well, offensive line, we I think the Ravens, I would put them first offensive. So line. we gave them to. So with that being said, Cincinnati have the most. The Browns will have the second best. Right. They have the most and the most important position. Right. So I, I would, I would like the Browns to have a second. I would give the Browns the second edge because we don't know exactly with, with, with the Ravens. You know, it's a new offense coming in. You got a new guys that you got to get chemistry with. Not saying that the Browns don't have that same problem, but at least they had some games to, you know, expand yeah. on those things. So My, I like, I give the Browns yeah. maybe the slight nod on on the Ravens, but I think it's very, very, very close. Who's the Who's the most likable team in? The division, the most likable Cincinnati, yes. probably outside of the Browns. Uh, no, 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 just if you looking at it, Cincinnati. What do you mean For, likable? Like the like, players are likable? No, no, just like there's teams where you, you there, there there could be teams that are good or yeah. bad, but yeah. people are like they have like neutral, a neutral fan. They the neutral. They have like oh, I, I watch the Browns if they come on like Cincinnati. Yeah, I, I think when you talk like likability, like oh, I like this team, or I like to watch. I them. like to watch them. And yeah, I don't know. Even the Brown style of play isn't conducive, or used to do. <laughs> it because, hasn't been. We'll it, see if it to, is this to, year. Like, you know, having a, a following, but yeah. I would say people across the country like Joe Burrow. I think Lamar Jackson took a little bit of a hit, but it seems to be back to normal since they paid him. Right, mm-hmm. and I think. I don't know how people feel about the Steelers. I think they like Mike Tomlin and their, their brand of football. Yeah. So I would say likability in terms of, you know, who's going to get that narrative? Who's going to get that? Because right now the slant is people don't really like Jimmy Haslam and people really don't like Deshaun Watson. Right. Yeah, so true. those two things kind of like weigh them down. And I, I yeah. would never thought that the Bengals could get out of the basement because Mike Brown. Right. They didn't Mike Brown and uh, you know, Marvin Lewis was there for so long yeah. and you had perfect and like so the Bengals had a, <laughs> yeah, had a lot of bad guys. They had a lot of bad guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah. bro. So it was like like now the Bengals because J- Joe Burrow, he done changed a lot of stuff like as yeah. far as they're, they're on TV a lot. They're I, I hear more tertiary people like entertainers or yeah. people talking about the bagels, which I think it was crazy. Like, yeah, right. You never used to hear that. Yeah, well, that's what a quarterback can do. Yeah, I mean, that's that it's that. So my uh, in terms of the Browns compared to other teams, who are the other teams outside of the division that are in the same range 
in terms of winning their division, you know, like their Browns are plus three. They're plus 360. Uh, you're going to have to give me a sec to look that up. On because my phone. I feel like the Browns, yeah, I think we'd all agree the Bengals should be the favorite and are, are the most likely team to win Well, before division. before we get out of that bowl, yeah. let me ask you guys this about the Browns at plus 360. Yeah. Personally, as someone who that's what likes, to, to. likes to gamble, yeah. I think that's really good value yeah, for them just gonna at say. plus 360. If you ask me, like, okay, I got to lay 20 bucks on either the Ravens, the Browns, or the Steelers, I would lay it on the Browns between those three teams because I, I, I think we know what the Ravens are. I, and, and I think they're... I just don't think they're better than the Bengals. It's a lot. It's a lot I don't of think the Steelers can be better. Than, I think the Browns are the only team in this division that, you know, listen, it, obviously Joe Burrow gets hurt. Everything else is out the window. But I think the Browns are the only team of the other three that if things go right, can end up winning the division. In I, my opinion, I just think it's a lot. It's a lot of moving parts with Baltimore with, you know, the new offense coming in. Yeah. You know, it, it will Lamar be comfortable sitting in the pocket and no. throwing the ball. They could talk because, about that all they want because that's going to run when it comes down. Well, to that's it. what team, teams is going to force his, his hand, right? You know, they're going to we're not going to rush. It. We're going to make you sit in the pocket. If you beat us dash dishing the rock out, then yeah. that's that's so be it. But if he if, and his if, natural instinct, that's what I'm saying. If he reverts back to his old ways. Yeah. I think the difference will be they probably won't call a- as many runs, like because obviously they got it, to. You got to run the ball with Baltimore because that's no, I, th- that's what made Lamar so dangerous right. is when he had healthy running backs. If they become a more of a passing offense, I don't think they're that I'm, good. I, I, listen, I'm clapping it up. If they yeah. if they want to drop back 40 times, <laughs> sure, good man. luck. <laughs> Have at it. Good luck. Have at it. That's why. <laughs> that's why when we talk about that's why we you talk about DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, you. you the Browns is sneaky, right? See, a lot of these national media dudes be bamboozling y'all. They really hype you up to be like, no, nah, just I hope you don't do it, right? They'll they'll downplay a move, downplay a move, and then he goes somewhere else, and all of a sudden it's the greatest move we've ever seen. Deshaun Watson is the wild card. If Deshaun Watson plays like Deshaun Watson traditionally plays, the Browns go from a regular team to a Super Bowl contender, like. I think I agree that yeah. and, 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 and a lot of people don't want to jump to that conclusion and I get why they don't want to do that. But I'm telling you if he plays like he is capable of playing. We've seen him playing the Browns have all of the requisite parts to be Super Bowl contenders. The Browns Deshaun Watson is the biggest wild card in the entire yeah, league. Yep. Yeah, Deshaun in Watson. The entire league. Yeah, Desha- the Browns could be if he plays if he's Houston Deshaun, I agree they're a Super Bowl contender. Absolutely. If he's last year Deshaun, they're oh, not going yeah. to the playoffs. Everybody's fired. They're not going to the playoffs <laughs> yeah. with the guy we saw last year. It's not okay. happening. Yeah. That's the difference. What other team? I don't know. You know, I, again, injury can affect any team. I've never but seen just that. going into the season not saying injury. If we get one Deshaun, we're a Super Bowl contender. We get the other, we're a mediocre. You can say that about. You can say that about Lamar. I, no, no. I, I, my so, personal opinion. Yes, you can. No, no, you can I don't think the Ravens are a MVP, Super Bowl contender. If you get MVP Lamar, well, yeah, his, that, his, that's. If, if, so let me ask you this, Thomas. <laughs> if you get MVP Deshaun Watson. He ain't never had MVP. I, I mean, but Houston, he, Houston, D.Y. Oh, well, well, okay, so he may well, not have won an MVP, but Deshaun <laughs> Watson at his best is way better yeah. than Lamar at his so, best. So if you get both opinion. of those guys, well, that's not. That, uh, that's go ahead, my opinion. You, go ahead. You get both of them. You got Lamar Jackson and you got Houston Deshaun Watson. If you are playing the Chiefs or you in the Super Bowl, I don't think that 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 the Lamar Jackson's game style can fit. If I'm if the, if I'm the Chiefs, as I'm playing the Chiefs, if I'm playing uh, Deshaun Watson, Houston style, what's going to happen is that means he can run. That means he can stand plays. That means they got a running game. And if they get down, he can still throw the rock. See, right. Lamar Jackson yeah. got to play in a certain pace. I got to keep the game close. We running, doing a lot of running. We do, like he may get deemed up, go out of the game. We've seen it a lot. I yeah. think that, that's a scary proposition if you're playing the Browns because yeah. 
let's face can, the reality. You can do both. Here's the reality, okay? Patrick Mahomes, obviously the best quarterback in football, and then Burrow and Allen are right below. Right. Deshaun Watson, if he plays like he is in Houston, is in that same group with Burrow and Allen. Now, he's got to do it again. Mm-hmm. Can't put him there going into the season, but he, Lamar Jackson is never in that category. Let's the Lamar Jackson. I'm a big Lamar Jackson and I lo- fan. I, like I love him. watching him play. But he, the season he had to me was an anomaly. Teams, uh, and that doesn't mean he won't be good. I just don't think he's ever going to be anywhere close to an MVP candidate. Teams didn't know what the hell to do with him. He was the greatest athlete or one of the greatest athletes we've ever seen. You know, running the ball. It was like teams were, uh, and now since that year, Lamar Jackson has been a. Uh, just a pretty good quarterback because his run game hasn't been affected. He's had a, his running backs has been hurt every he's year. He's made a lot of what, mistakes. What made him so dangerous is because when with him they had the running game, so you were so busy trying to stop that run game that right. when he pulled it, it was something you wasn't you yeah, wasn't with the other aware quarterbacks. Of. We don't need the run game. If you was a, if I you was you. A, we could still be great. If you Why, was a, I hear you. If yeah. you was a DB, you, you, I would, I, I'd be more worried about Lamar than Deshaun because if you turn your back at man and man, you just feel like he's always it's, it's always the Michael is. Vick. It's the Michael Vick to, thing, but. If you can get it to a point where you're up and you, he's down, you're down, done. He you're down 10, comeback. 14 points, and he has to throw the football. Forget it. Now, now as a DB, you like, is he gonna make this deep seam throw? That's not true. Is he gonna make this deep seam? Uh, not true. Because if you if you guys? if you up by 10 to 14 points and it's the start of the fourth quarter, that's 15 minutes. That means if I play, even if I play off, he could still extend the drive. Why? Because I'm playing so far off that by the time he takes off running, boom, that's a first down. He's just play. picking up the chance. I wouldn't so play off. You would you would t- would you take Lamar Jackson over Deshaun Watson? Forget off the field stuff. Would I take Lamar over Deshaun Watson? <sighs> Is Deshaun Watson's passing game that much better than Lamar Jackson? And is Lamar Jackson's running game that better than that that much better than Deshaun Watson? Lamar is a unbelievable playmaker. Um at the quarterback position, at the end of the day, you want the guy that can stand in the pocket and make throws. Right. Because that's, that's right. what a quarterback is. Now, again, uh, but, to me, the only hesitation is that Watson looked terrible last year. Yes. I'm assuming he's going to get back to the guy he was this year, but that's not a guarantee. If he does, to me, it's not close between the two. Just for me. doesn't mean I'm right. But I even look at it like somebody other do, like Jalen Hurts. I got to see it again. I, I mean, if I, I didn't see Deshaun Watson put balls on the money. Like, and, and a lot. Now, if you say I got Jalen Hurts and I got Deshaun Watson – Jalen using his legs very well, but it's very difficult, man. When you start going in these playoffs and, and and they start clamping down on you, and I'm like, I love to see what Jim Schwartz is going to do, but playing off coverage on these guys, I think you, you bail them out. I'm just going to play tight and see what you got. All right, we got, we got a new game to play. We do, and we had some help from the internet on this one. Yeah. And whenever we ask the internet questions, and we're going to play some internet answers for you, it's brought to us by our dear friends at PCC Air Force. If you're looking for a job with career advancement and great benefits, well, PCC Air Foils is a leading manufacturer in Northeast Ohio. All locations of PCC Air Foils in East Lake Menor, Wycliffe, and Minerva are hiring for all positions starting at $18 and up, plus full benefit packages, paid time off, and a signing bonus. You can apply online at precast.com slash careers to learn more. Before I explain to you how we're going to play and what the game is, we teased this last week, and I, I put it out on our community tab. We mentioned it on the show. We mentioned it in overtime that I was looking for Browns fans to give us their perspective here. Now, a bunch of people answered. I said, send me an email. Only one person sent me an email and followed up. So shout out to John Byington. Let's give him a round of applause for John. Yes, John. He not only yeah, John. followed my instructions, <laughs> sent me an email. He sent us the videos back. Nice. So we are going to see John four times. We have 13 Good. questions for this game. He sent four answers in. I wanted to get four for each, but only yeah. one person answered. So I only got these four. And this is a yes or no game. It is very simple. Would you do insert here? For a guaranteed appearance in the Super Bowl for the Browns. Not a win, but an appearance. Now, here's my problem with this. (laughs) (laughs) Is, to me, the great, the excitement of going to the Super Bowl. And I understand the Browns haven't been, but the Bengals have. So, I've been through this. The excitement of going through the Super Bowl is the journey of getting there. Especially the playoff journey to get there. 
And if I knew that they were guaranteed that spot, I don't think it feels the same. You know what I mean? But well, oh. you would get you would still get the full feeling of victory if the Browns were to win. If 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 you need to cut it out. You know where you at? If the Browns, I, I, listen, I, I, you telling me the Browns, I'm watching every game and yeah. with a smile if, on my face. At the end, I want, I, I, here's what I'm going to do is I want, I, I am answering this question as if once I answer the question, you are using the Will Smith uh, from uh, uh, Men in Black. You know how he does the yeah, thing where you yeah, yeah. and I can't, and I don't remember anything that I agreed to. I, I, okay. All right. That's how I'm taking it. Go just, ahead. Hey, listen, the flash. It's just like people. Or I'm going to take it as I get $2 million if, instead of the Browns. If the people, if, if, if somebody told you this supermodel has to be with you for two years. Yeah. Because we're paying her. That that's fine. That's the guess what? <laughs> I still reap the benefits. You gotta pretend all. I'm pretending all for two years. Yeah. Look all at right. me. That, to me, it's different. But all right, I, I hear. You. All right, let's go. What's so we have one? 13 questions. Okay. It's a yes or no. Write it on the board, but don't turn it around. I want yes. everyone to reveal at once. Yes. Okay. Okay. So Steve, let's take the first one. To guarantee a Super Bowl appearance for the Browns, would you allow every photo on your camera roll to be leaked to the public? Yes or no? Oh, man, that's a good one. I mean, I got no, you know. And remember, write it on the board. We'll do a reveal all at once. I mean, I got. Anybody I mean, sending naked pictures of themselves I mean, to people? I mean, I got, I got pictures on there with, like, my face covered with a trash bag <laughs> and, like, a cherry edible thong, so I can't do all those. You do? Man, I got it like that. That's and awesome. I got a belt timed around my waist what with no be, pants on. What you, be, what you be doing in your spare time? <laughs> I got, I'm in there posing with chocolate fondue. <laughs> I, I don't uh, know, man. Maybe, yeah, this is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. Dev, I'm gonna go super viral. <laughs> these, are, these are all along uh, the same line. I'm on so. the fence on this one. And yeah. this is and, and parents. Now here's the uh, thing. If I got hacked, I'm gonna just blame it on somebody else. I got hacked and it was Photoshop. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. I'm like, these is fake. These is fake pictures. And, and by the way, if I do, I'm gonna have a, a, a Photoshop artist. I'm gonna have them put abs on me. I'm gonna have them like Photoshop the abs. Make you look stronger. Yeah. In better shape. Yeah. All just right. Prowess. And the answer, everyone, flip on three. One, two, three. Yes, yes, and. Tyvis says absolutely. I was on the fence because I I I, 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 I do have a couple of pictures like with no shirt on, and I don't really need anybody to see kids. me with no shirt That's on. That's all you go see is my kids. Hey, so hey, go hey, ahead. Listen. Hey, listen. I don't have anything. I'm not a, I'm that, not a though. big picture taker, so I don't have a lot of photos. Man. And, if, and they I'll, just my kids are there, being I'm, football. I'm on my uniform. phone with tubes. I'll be telling my mom, you better quit swiping. Take them off. You better stop swiping. I got these tube socks. Don't swipe on. again. <laughs> All right, number two, Mike. That was a good number one. Number two, and we have an answer from David, or for, from John, excuse yeah. me, John, for this next one. Okay. So we'll get your answer, then we'll listen to John. <laughs> Question two To guarantee a Super Bowl appearance for the Browns, would you eat a piece nah. of dog poop? No, nah, we ain't doing that. <laughs> we not, we not doing it. Oh, Mike. Nah, fam. I think we're all ready. <laughs> Come on, man. You might. No. Be. No. No. Nah. And nah, fam. Let's nah. see what John said. Would John eat dog poop? Nope. <laughs> Would you eat dog poop? Hell no. That's what they do up in Ann Arbor. I think they smoke that crap up there, too. <laughs> I thought John was going to say yes. Shut up to John. Him, I'm like, that guy's been, that guy's been <laughs> suffering with the Browns for 50 years, 60 Bro, years, whatever it is. Shout out to that man. I thought he was going to say yes. No. Like, uh, hell no. Yeah, no. Nah. No. No. And <laughs> shout out to John for not only, like I said, <laughs> He responded to the community tab post. I said, shoot me an email. He sent me an email and got the video back within 10 minutes. John, Hell no. now here's the thing. I would do it for enough money. Yeah, no money. Yeah, like a that's, billion. I need a you billion. You wouldn't do that for two million dollars. I need a. I need a billion. Hey, let's stop. Playing. You would need poop for two million dollars. You. I crazy? need a billion. Stop playing. I need a billion. Tyvis, you're out of your mind. I need a billion. Tyvis, I'm sorry. Tyvis, you do that. I ain't doing nothing crazy for nothing less than a billion dollars. Hey, hey, listen. He gonna do that for a hundred k. Tyvis, do that one for hundred k. Yeah. And, and all you He's can eat five. Crap. All you can eat five guys. That's one what he one does. billion. <laughs> Recap that one. Bi one cash? billion. I lick my. Fingers. Cash? <laughs> oh, God. Man, that's disgusting. Oh, that, 
All right, next one. <laughs> oh. Question number three. Oh. To guarantee a Super Bowl appearance for the Browns, <laughs> would you get in the cage with Stipe Miocic for three minutes? Yeah. Would he be taking it easy on us or he'd be no, fighting normal? This, this is As Stipe. soon as he touched my body, I'm folding. <laughs> oh, Lord, you didn't hit me in the throat. Oh, Stipe, you didn't hit me in the throat. I can't breathe. Somebody come get me. <laughs> you wrote already? Uh, yeah, yeah, ain't you fast? <laughs> All right, answers: No for bull, yes for G. And Tyvis says, "I knocked dude out." <laughs> yeah, hey, we saw that wrestling video for your dude. society, 1870. Tyvis, are you crazy? Are you sure about that? Tyvis, man, no, knock dude Tyvis, out. Tyvis, you be out in ten seconds. I'll hey, be chill. No, he's gonna lift his foot and put it right behind your ear. Yeah, you finish. <laughs> By the way, I would do any of these things for for two million dollars. I would almost, <laughs> do almost anything. Wait, wait, wait till you see what we're getting. We'll okay. see if this stands. <laughs> I mean, if, those, if eat a poop is one of the first three things, I can't even imagine what we're getting That's to at the end. All right, easy. number four. And remember, there's thirteen of these. Tyvis, this one's easy for you. But would you shave your head bald? To guarantee a Super Bowl appearance for the Browns. We all, all our football team in high school, all shaves their heads. Every Master nope. McKinley game, all of us do. It's not that difficult. Yeah, that's an easy one. Now, I don't know. That one might be the easiest. Now, some yes, t- yes. And Tyvis says it's headed there now. <laughs> it is. And there ain't no, it so, look, yes. Listen, Tyvis understands. He could, though. He got the chin strap. Hmm. If you bought up top, you got to have a good chin strap. I think it's a bigger deal for me because black guys generally look good with bald heads. I and agree. white guys generally look stupid with bald heads. Yes. Generally, there's exceptions to both. Yeah, it is. But it's um, very rare for a white guy. Usually, if you're a white guy with a bald head, you you look like a neo-Nazi. You know? Yeah, like we look at you kind of strange. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> your head is way too clean. Did you do that yeah, on purpose? Unless you're old. Like, if you're old, you're just old. Whatever. But like a young, bald-headed white guy, it's like creepy usually. All right, John does have an answer for this next question. So yeah. we'll get your answer then, John's. Okay. To guarantee a Super Bowl appearance for the Browns, would you get a large face tattoo? <laughs> By the way, I would rather, for $2 million, I would rather eat poop than get a face tattoo. How large is large? Because I already got a large face. So proportionately. <laughs> Me too. I got so, a large face So too. proportionally, my large and your large might be that's, that's the fair. same thing. Like, it has to cover. Is that a real tattoo on this person? Man, it's crazy. Anthony, Anthony made these. Anthony? Uh, according to Google Images, yes. That is I, I just Googled face tattoo, and that was the first one to pop it up. It looks like that little thing from, from Total Recall. Remember yeah, that the, little the, alien uh, baby article came headline? Out? Quato. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Open your mind to me. Hey, that, listen, that was the, that. I was old. I think yeah. I was like 15. Yeah. And I saw that. No, I was a little younger. Freaked me out, and I didn't like that little black dude with the chicken wing on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he like, takes the thing off, and he's like, oh, man, I'm, "I got ten kids." Uh, no, 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 listen, I'm cool with that. I'm not watching that. I only watch that's that a show. great movie. No, I don't, I, love I, don't, that movie. I don't like that. All right, here we go. Bull, no. G. Tyvis says yes. G says no. Tyvis, why yes? Do we get a face tattoo? Because he huh? because he can put it on under his beard. He can shave his beard, get the tattoo, and let the beard grow back. You ain't slick. Shout out, Gucci. <laughs> Shout out, Gucci. <laughs> he thought he was slick on that. Oh nah, my bro. God, that's funny. <laughs> he ain't gonna let it grow back. You wouldn't even tell, bro. <laughs> and we have- Earl. Earl. That's a that's a fifty percent hit rate on that joke, Tyvis. I think me, Earl got it. I'm not yeah. sure anyone else did. Uh, let's see what John said on this one, because John did answer whether or not he'd get a face tattoo. That's so funny. Would you get a large tattoo on your face? Again, no. I don't want to identify as a Steelers fan. No way, dude. <laughs> oh, Steelers fan. <laughs> By the way, that is cause, dang. Face tag. I, What's wrong with a face tag? You get a fire oh. face tag. What you mean? You got to be a rapper and you got to be a snitch. Listen, listen, the Browns going to the Super Bowl. At the listen. same time. We got to be a snitch. <laughs> no chance am I wearing a, getting a face tag. Because it don't say 6 9 Look, G, right? for $2 million, you either got to get a face tattoo or eat poop. What are you doing? I'll do both. No, but if you had to do, you had to do one, <laughs> not both. I'll get the tattoo and eat poop while I'm getting a tattoo. No, but I'm saying you only have to do I, one. I, Why the, would you force yourself to do the other? I'll do the poop because the poop, right? yeah. I that's, just, that's just 10 minutes of awfulness, and, maybe and, an hour. And, 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 and a face tattoo, I'm stuck with forever. And, and what you can do, and what you can do is you can wash that down. I exactly. need a, I need or, a billion. Or later. 
You're full of bull. I need a billion, bro. If I you said to your wife, I need if you said to your she wife, do it. Jay Crawford offered me two million dollars <laughs> to eat poop, and, you, said, and your wife said, and you said to your wife, "I'm not doing it." She'd be pissed at you. I tell her you do it. I need a shit for two. I I'll pull. I call her bluff. I call her bluff. You do it. Now, now listen. <laughs> yeah. Now it's even worse if it's if it's runny though. <laughs> Next, and now please. She took it to another Next. Level. Next. Well, speaking oh of food, my God! Okay. Of all yeah. Disgusting yeah. food. Well, I, I may throw up for a second time on set. Go ahead. Oh, speaking of uh, oh. your choices on caloric consumption. Yeah. Fear factor. Would you go vegan for two years to guarantee a Browns That's appearance sure. in the Super Bowl? I'd be smaller. I was gonna say no, but then I'm like, you know, I'd lose a ton of weight. Be more healthy. I don't know if I can stick to it, but yeah, I'd be. You hard. have to two, two years. years. Yes, yes for the G and Bull. Tyvis Tyvis? definitely saying yes. Tyvis says yes. That was that there was easy. Okay, I thought we might get a little pushback. Healthy lifestyle. I appreciate that. That would be hard. I don't Very know. I don't think I could actually do it, but I, 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 think I, I would try. Do, but... In your mind, you would. Okay. Yeah. Next up, this is number seven of thirteen. We mm. still have six more after this. Right. Would you give up your bed and sleep on a hardwood floor oh. for two years if it guaranteed an appearance in the Super Bowl for the Cleveland Browns? I got back problems, man. That's easy for me. I got back and they problems. I ain't doing that. No for G. No, for, You guys are in lockstep. G and Bull are in lockstep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyvis, I feel like Tyvis is going to say yes. Oh, he's 100% saying yes. Says, Tyvis says easily. Yeah. I was raised Tyvis like that. Tyvis is skinny and G and I are not skinny. So. Uh, and Ty- and Tyvis is younger. And he's younger, right. <laughs> he like, yeah, I could I, do that. Dude, I'm 52 and fat. I, I'm not sleeping <laughs> on the floor for two years. You crazy? <laughs> I don't know that I do it for one you, you might, yeah, you get, might get not you be a, able to get back up. Get you a nice pallet. Psh, hey, me easily. And, me and bull like me and bull like horses. If we ever, <laughs> if we ever lay it down, you might as well put us out That's of the mess. <laughs> <laughs> we sleep standing up. Put us out to pasture. Oh one of the God. downsides <laughs> of not having internet is I can't read you YouTube chat comments oh, as we're going God. through. And this this was designed to get some extra interaction. I told you, so check the your YouTube phone. people out there. Well, I, I only got two hands. I'm talking. I'm talking to Steve. Yeah. Uh, Keep answering. We'll go back. We'll look through. We'll like some comments after the show. Oh, we appreciate you guys God. playing along. I'm curious to see what you guys oh, would do on these. Here, uh, here, yes here, or no. So we <laughs> apologize that we're not getting your answers in here. That oh, was the original Steve plan, but we will move on. All right, you guys ready for the next one? Yes. This one I think will be easy for you guys. I really want to see what the chat would say. <laughs> would you give up alcohol for five years? I mean, for to Tyvis guarantee and I, an appearance he, he, in the Browns for the Super Bowl. You don't want you a drinker either. Yeah, right? that's cool. Yeah, that, None that, of the three of us are drinkers, really. I mean, I, I get hammered on my own sometimes, but <laughs> but it'd be that. like once every, like, I don't know, like once every two years. Yes, Tyvis, you don't drink at all. Never had Tyvis it. doesn't drink at Tyvis all. Tyvis has never had Never had, had it, so hey, this is easy. I, I have, <laughs> I think I've had maybe three beers since COVID started. And these dudes in the shout out to the chat. The chat is I just saw uh, I just saw the day the kids ran up. They oh. was ready to go. <laughs> it scared me. I said, oh, <laughs> little army of kids. This is under uh. Are they here? Yeah, yeah they they're outside. They oh Lord. Yeah. All right, give us the next one. Okay, this is a this is a controversial one. Okay. Yeah. I hope I hope this is a split answer. Do you know what's coming? Are you laughing at this? Are you laughing oh, at the kids? No, not the not this one. Okay, would you cut off the tip of your pinky to guarantee an appearance in the Super Bowl with Brown? Just a tip, the last knuckle, the last knuckle. Would you cut off the tip of your pinky to guarantee the Browns being in the Super Bowl? Bro, have you ever got your finger caught in the door? That's the worst day of your life. Like you have to lay down as a grown that, person. Right. Like, that's gotta, not getting it cut off. And, and you got to put the little blindfolds on and have ice on your upper body. Like that's how hard it is to get over a, your door, get sl- hand get slammed in the door. Now I'm gonna get rid of it. No, can't do it. Tyvis, you ready? Can't do it. Hold on. Can't do it. And we do have an answer from John on this one as well. Okay. No, no. for G. None no for us. Bull. And Tyvis says no. My name isn't Ronnie Lott. Right. Shout We're out not to Ronnie cutting Lott. off our, uh, tip of our pinky. <laughs> Let's see what John says pinky. about this one. I think John's going to say yes. Would you cut the top of your pinky finger up? Again, no. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to stand out at a tea party. <laughs> I don't know that John's that dire. Oh, I have to say he ain't dedicated. John at all. Could never be in the Yakuza. <laughs> he ain't dedicated no. at all. 
Nah, I can't do that. He cool. Right. He cool with life. <laughs> but you don't see these. Right, we got a, we got a couple more. We got a couple Go more. Ahead. Anthony's favorite ones coming up. <laughs> Not this one though. But would you eat two dozen uncooked hot dogs in a 24-hour span oh. to guarantee an appearance in the Super oh. Bowl for the Cleveland Browns? You don't know how many. Oh, like, that's like, so gross. Do you know? As a child, I used to think that these things were a delicacy. They, they would cut them up. There was no microwaves, and you would eat regular you ate raw hot dogs. Raw hot dogs, and now, oh, I'm paying for it still. As we speak, the hot dogs are still in my system. No, mm. I'm not. How many? How much did I, you say I had to do? Twenty-four. 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 I hope so essentially one an hour. Twenty-four. In I could do twenty-four it. hours. I could. I could I'm out it. on that. Bull says no. I'm not eating raw hot dogs. G is going back for glutton and punishment. G says yes. <laughs> and Davis says yes. Yes. Joey did. Chestnut With Jr. Vienna sausages. Vienna sausages <laughs> are different. <laughs> are yeah, that's not different. the same. <laughs> Those They're are close, different. Close enough. And, and by the way, close enough. you do have you do have to rinse off the jelly that comes in that can though. Like, <laughs> wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So when I was a kid, we used to have a ballpark Franks in the refrigerator. Right. And you got hungry, you just went in there and you grabbed one out the pack. Facts. And I was I was I was a little kid standing in my door with a screen busted out with the uh, Kool-Aid oh, on my t-shirt oh, and a raw hot dog facts. in my hand. No oh, hot no. Pause. You know. You couldn't put, you put it why not put it in the microwave? No. It, that, it was it was it wasn't like that. It wasn't boy. like that. <laughs> it, like that. it was not a hot dog. In <laughs> it was easy. You just went in there and grabbed it. it Wait, was, but yeah. did you have a microwave, Earl? No, it just what we had a microwave, but it, it didn't go like that, boo. You know, you grow up in the hood, man. Your mama said, "Boy, you better get that hot dog out that refrigerator." Uh, and and then, like she, she went, and then we never had hot dog I mean, buns I, either. I ate raw chopped meat a couple of times as a kid, which is really gross. What's twenty four so raw hot dogs? Like, raw like hamburger. Facts. Meat. Oh, you tripping? <laughs> it's gross. Like but my you, dad did that. You could die. You, well, we didn't know that. In <laughs> like, <laughs> you could die. So real Not quick, a lot. so Go you ahead. guys are saying you would eat dog crap. But no. You eat an uncooked hot dog? That, that, no. See that? Contradicting themselves. No, we lot, didn't say, we, I didn't I, say yes to that one. We, I said yes. He did. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> I did. Did you say yes to that? I thought I said no. G definitely did. I, I know I, I said no. No, we I all I said, said I no. I swear million we, dollars. No, we all said no. Oh, for two million. We all, two million, I would do any of those. Everybody said no. Done. Yeah, everybody uh, said no. Nobody offered you the two million, though. Yeah, well, then I'm not doing that. So we do have an answer. This is John's final one. And, yeah, John, okay. thank you again. Real Shout quick, before we play, do you, what do you think John says to this one? Probably no. I think John will eat the raw hot dogs. But I, I keep picking him to say yes, and he always says no. So let's try it. John, what do you have to say? Would you eat two dozen hot dogs and uncooked in a single day? Yes, I would. Ah! I think I'd have to to put some Burtman John. Stadium mustard on them. <laughs> See what I'm saying? There you go. You guys would all be throwing up too. Hey, shout out real quick though. I know we did it earlier. I want to do it again. Shout out to John for answering, responding. Yeah. We want you guys to interact like that. We got much do this easier more said than done. I like this and get people to like understand what they have to do. They were confused. Yes. Let's get them to understand what they got to do because this was that was good to have him. His hey, we twelve people responded to me saying I want to help out. I sent them the instructions. Only one person got back to me. Yeah. So. So yeah, we, need, we need that volunteer support. Right. We got a couple more though before yeah. we move on to the next topic. We have, I believe, three more. Yeah, three more, and two of these are my favorite, and the last one is Anthony's favorite by far. So, <laughs> number three, it's an Earl of the Pearl like suggestion. Pokemon for twenty-four hours straight. I'll do that for free. No, there's nothing to do with Pokemon. <laughs> go ahead. But would you go streaking in a popular neighborhood if it guaranteed a Super Bowl appearance for the Cleveland Browns? Well, we know Tyvis's answer. <laughs> this is this is an easy yes, right? I mean, come on. Tyvis can't even do ten pull-ups. This is kind of this he is. He did get. That's true. Mike did beat you in the pull-up competition. This, this is uh this is quite frowned upon in an area I live in, and I might get arrested, which could turn out bad. Hmm. <laughs> Bull says no. Shocker. No. no. How long? Tyvis says. A hundred percent ain't no shame a, in my game. It's a thousand. G, G, you're the tiebreaker. <laughs> How long? Go streaking. How long does it have to be? You got to run on the block. A full full block. <laughs> ah, that block is kind of. All right, man. I'm, I'm doing it for you guys. And G Bush is going streaking. Oh I'll do it for you guys. 
call You're my definitely att- getting arrested. Call my attorney yeah. and please, like, listen, and put something together for my legal package. All right. He's getting arrested, 100%. Don't, A couple don't real, try real this quick. at home. Yes. Frank the Tank, baby, according to right uh, the YouTube chat, a little old school reference. Yeah. Uh, KR Thunder says, as long as the police don't ticket me. And Spencer Dyke says, hell yeah, we're going streaking. So Nobody wants to see Spencer do that. <laughs> Spencer's all like confident. No, nah, Sp- Spencer's okay. okay. see him. We have two left. <laughs> see that. He said, take the pinky. Spencer said, what a two pinky left. good for. Okay. <laughs> all right. Next. Would you get an ex's name tattooed on your arm? Oh. To guarantee an appearance in the Super Bowl for the Browns. This is devastating. I, 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 she's got a lot of exes. <laughs> I had a lot of fiancés. Do you? It took me. It took me two years of counseling to be able to even say her name, let alone tattoo. Um, man, this hurts. I'm really thinking about this too. <laughs> I don't think Tyvis has had an ex. Do you? Yeah, I got plenty. Oh, I don't know why I thought you were yeah, like, I got plenty, longer, yeah. like from when you were in high school, oh, but I'm wrong. My. I think I could get it redone with something over it, but it's going to look like a bouquet nah, of flowers. No, that can't be part of the conversation. Why? It's got to stay there forever. Forever? Yeah. No. Nah. Yeah, you can't cover it up with a koi fish no, in two is, years. Yeah. Got to be there with the face tattoo also. And, oh, you said no to that one. And we do, and we do, our, we do kind of got matching tattoos, but it's not really matching. It's just like a symbol. Yeah. But I can play it off like that was just what I was doing. All right, you can. All right, does everyone have their answer? Forever. On three. Oh. No for Bull, no for G. Tyvis says, never. The lieutenant ain't having that. Love you, Lauren. We love you too, Lauren. <laughs> this dude wrote a note. You didn't tell me he was going to write a note. I had to just, <laughs> now I got to write a note. Hold on. Sorry for this. Sorry. I love you too. That's true. Your wife's watching. The lieutenant ain't having that. <laughs> your wife, does your wife watch every show? Uh, she t- she she uh, tunes in every now and again. Right. She puts me on the big TV so my kids can watch me and go. You got right. me out hey, here looking Dad. bad. <laughs> yeah. you better write a nice message. To your wife. Couple YouTube comments on that one. <laughs> yeah. The life of Chapo says absolutely not. Lewis Ward said you're trying to get me killed. Hell no. Uh, SZR429 says yep, but on a tombstone. Uh, Joseph Ryan says tombstone. that could be a good name though. And Cody Clark says maybe if. I get creative control. All right. Put it on the <laughs> creative, <laughs> creative control means he just wants meals. <laughs> like, what do you mean? You're not. Our last one, Mike. This is the last one. This is Anthony's favorite. Are I you just guys think ready? The picture is so funny. Okay. Oh, my right. goodness. To guarantee a Super Bowl appearance for the Cleveland Browns, this is deep. would you kiss your cousin? <laughs> uh, when, you, when you say kiss, what do you. Uh, what, what do you mean? It's got to be it's as on passionately lip. as the picture right. shows. Let's be it doesn't need a full makeout. Yeah, so it's just a kiss, kiss lip to lip. I mean, that's love. I mean, you know, that's that's love. By the way. So like a, just one little one of those? It's got to be a real kiss. No, no details. No tongue, you know kiss. what he's talking about. <laughs> I ain't doing that. <laughs> no. no. Hell no. No. My mom did no. always tell me. No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on now. Hold on. Uh-oh. Hold on. Wait Roll a minute. Reverse. Tyvis initially wrote no on his board. <laughs> wait, see it. wait a minute. Is he going to talk himself into kissing his cousin? Now we know where Anthony's mind is. No, yeah. no, no. How's just, that picture was how's really your funny fa- when I put how's the sensor bar over it? One? Yeah, it's a little creepy. You, you, yeah, you saved it to last, too. So I you... did not order these as <laughs> Mike. <laughs> I don't right. make the rundown when I'm not producing. This is, G, this, what'd you say? What's your answer? I got a lot of cousins, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't get that. I can't no. get down like that. And Tyvis has turned his board and initially said no. If this is a cousin nah, through a, marriage. No, 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 pop out. <laughs> that's that's what you mean. Hey, so that's not a cousin? No. no. Yes, it is. No, it's not. In, in the black, black community, marriage, in yes. the black community, everybody. You said, that's you didn't put, law. you never cousin said, law. no, he said a cousin. He never said blood, first cousin, none of that. He just you, said a cousin. You, cousin's got to be a blood relative. No, no, it don't. Listen, and we got the YouTube chat, couple answers in the YouTube chat. Evan419 says, I can hear Sweet Home Alabama playing in the background. Kenyon Harris says for a Super Bowl win, pucker up, cuz. Oh Country uh, road. The life of Chapo says maybe third cousins. Uh, All right. <laughs> Shuttlesworth says that's a Pittsburgh thing. Scotty Wagner says my third cousin, kind of bad. LOL. Scotty chill. <laughs> oh. They, they oh. wow. Chill, bro. They wow. 
Kinda and then Nick the dog <laughs> says, just kiss her for a Super Bowl win. Heck yeah. What, so. kind, of, right, what kind of West Virginia let's stuff wrap going up on this. over here? And with that, <laughs> with that, we have entered the lunch o'clock hour <laughs> yeah. of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. And as always, when we enter the lunch hour, it's brought to us by Call It Company's Championship. This is crazy. Firestone Famous Country Club, July 12th through the 16th. All your favorite golfers <laughs> will be there. Check them out. All the information is on callitgolf.com. We love Call It Company's Championships, and we will be there, and we hope you guys will be too. So... Hard Knocks is having a problem finding a team to do it. It's never been an issue in the past. There's been, what, about 20 seasons of Hard Knocks, give or take? Yeah. The last couple of years, they've done the traditional Hard Knocks, and they've also done the in-season one, which I think they did with Arizona. Detroit was on the, the traditional one last year. Um, supposedly, this year, they're having a hard time finding anybody. The league can force a few teams, the Jets, the Saints, the Commanders, and the Bears. The Jets, Saints, and Bears have all come out publicly and said they don't want to be on. They can be forced by the league. The rule is if you don't have a new coach and you haven't been on, I think, in the last 10 years, then you could be forced. Or you, there's a couple, are those two things? There's a couple stipulations. There's yeah. four teams that are four eligible, teams. and they've all said, honestly, we don't want you here. Well, I don't know. Did Washington definitely say they didn't want to be on? If if they're looking for teams, I'm assuming that means the yeah. four teams that were eligible have all said, we Probably. really don't want Washington you Washington is, like, what's the story? It's also the most Washington. boring team in the world. They yeah, just have really. a new owner. They just got new hard knocks on that. Oh, I got well, Eric B. Enemy. Unless, unless they want to. We're going to get excited about the offensive coordinator and hard knocks. They got the yeah. juiciest story. Washington? Yeah. Why? The owner? Yeah. But he's out. But but this is the it's a new I want to say it's a new, new regime. regime. Well, new I, I guess they don't want to be in either. I, I mean, I wouldn't I either. Would either. <laughs> so, the question is, we know the Browns were on it in, what was it, 20, what was the year that Hugh got fired? 19, 20, 17, 20, 17, 18, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, 20, 17, Hugh Jackson came off really poorly in that. Eventually got fired that year. There was the whole. I actually, he, yo, you had some stuff. Like I thought he t- him telling Baker, "Hey, look, you know what time you get here today?" Tyrod Taylor. Baker that was says, good. I thought that was good. But and the Corey Coleman thing was funny too. He was just like, "We like," it, but that he didn't really say anything. But he had a couple moments. He was. But busy. that the. The, the thing where he tells Baker, you've won the backup job. That yeah, that, that was bad. corny. That was and terrible. And the, the worst was that scene with all the coaches, and he's like, I'm driving the bus here. He looked, like, insecure. He, he looked like he was grandstanding. It almost yeah, seemed it, like he, he knew the cameras was there. It was bad. It was it was kind of cringe. And but it was it was fun selfishly for us to be able to see the Browns even more. Like we're able to go to training camp, but most of the fans can't. Yeah. You can't get Especially that behind this the scenes year. stuff. Right. Well, they're, they're in West Virginia. What do you mean? The the Browns start like the first yeah. part of their camp in West Virginia. They're, right, but they'll be here for some of their camp. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, so, would you want the Browns to be on? I mean, I I don't think they're going to. I don't think they would agree to do it, and they don't have to. They're not one of the teams that I can mean, be forced. From a fan's perspective, of course you want to see, you know, you want to get the inside look. Obviously, you'll get to see, you know, Deshaun, this new offense. If, you, if you're not allowed, if you can't make it to training camp and see it, you know, you want to see what it looks like. You'll be able to finally get to see Kevin Stefanski well, more so than uh, the post-game interviews, right. him saying the same things over and over. So from that standpoint, yes. But if I'm a working at the Browns and I'm in the organization, absolutely not because it, I need no distractions. This could potentially be my last year at this job, and we ain't we eliminating all distractions. We going all in this season. Gee, what say you? Um, I can understand why they wouldn't, but I would use it as an opportunity to springboard something. I think you either can embrace certain things. Uh, and use it as a as a positive, uh, or you can run away from it, and then you're gonna have to really deal with it. If the Browns want to be who they want to be, and that is get to the Super Bowl, that is win championships, and that's be, to be somebody. Like you know, you watch the Bengals. Like yeah, it's kind of uncomfortable sometimes that you know you're on you're on TV a lot, and this is uncomfortable because you're playing good teams and you can lose, and you might not get what you want. But at the end of the day, like you said, that excitement level. It outweighs all of it. So I, I would use it as an opportunity to say, okay, well, this is the new Browns we're building. If you're a free agent, if you're a fan, if you're anybody, 
this gives us an opportunity to recruit and reach out to the people that we kind of lost. Browns lost a lot of people. Like, yeah. you know, they got a lot of young kids in here. If you went down the line and asked them who their favorite team would be, some of them probably won't say the Browns. Some of them will say the Chiefs because of Mahomes or Joe Burrow. I like Josh Allen. There's a lot of different, you know, people that they could be rooting for besides the Browns because they haven't been good. It gives you another opportunity to kind of reach out to those people and say, look, hey, we're kind of cool. Look what we're doing and buy in and, and maybe you can become a friend, uh, fan. I, I can understand why the coaches and the front office find it to be a distraction. I wonder for the players, Tyvis, you, you weren't on Hard Knocks when you played. No, we did, but at Ohio State, we did have something um, similar. It was uh, ESPN came and did our training. So, was it, did you find it distracting? Not at all. So then, why? <laughs> so you're saying you don't need a distraction? If you didn't find that distracting, why is it a distraction for the players? Well, because it's, it's, you know why? You know why, boy? Let, yeah. me, let me let me let me sit up for this answer. All right, sit up. Because this is a different day and age. Okay, nowadays you it's this thing called Instagram, TikTok, and, and social media famous. Yeah. And that's what a lot of these people tend to do. So now you got guys doing extra stuff to be in front of the camera, and just in case they want to go viral. So now they're trying to you know make some different money. That's what that's that's what I'm afraid of. Somebody well, that's doing that extra stuff. From a coach's stuff. perspective, the coach is worried about a player. Yeah, to yeah, doing do extra stuff. Yeah, doing extra stuff, trying to be funny and all that stuff, and be famous that way instead of yeah. trying to be famous by making plays and perfecting your craft. I, ultimately, um, you know, the teams do have some say. This is not live. When the cameras are out there, none of this is going out live. The teams have some say as to what gets out there. They can nick. Not, I was surprised. What well, and that's then? What's the point? If if that's the case, like that, that's not giving the fans the honest perspective. We want to well, know that's it, what TV's about. We want to know everything. A lot of like that, we're the only nothing. honest show on TV. Most of the shows are phony, and even the shows they call reality shows are not really reality. They're phony. They're staged. They're actors. So I don't know. I mean, I I can't speak for the players to know how much of a distraction it is. I wouldn't think for the players it's a distraction. Coaches are just up uptight in general, right? They all, they think everything uh, is a distraction. G14 class. But it is weird. <laughs> We've never had a problem getting a team to be on hard knocks. Never. Well, it, I think now we're to a point where the league has grown and expanded. Now you don't even have to do nothing. You don't have to market your own team. No. Like, it's right. just baked into the cake. The system is what it is. You get money hand over fist. You don't really got to really, you know, put too much time, energy, and effort into it. So they're thinking like, okay, instead of us saying the reason we're making this money and we have these TV deals is because of things like hard knocks. Right. It's because of the way we televise our draft. We make it accessible 24 hours a day. We've made the whole year football year calendar. So, you know, now that they've gotten there and you're getting that check regardless, it's kind of difficult for you to go back and say, oh, well, I, do I really need to do that? No. What's the team you'd want to, besides the Browns, what's the team you'd most want to see on there? Mm. I actually have an answer. Go ahead, Mike. Well, I want to see the problem. Bengals so I could find things to not like about the Bengals. In all honesty, like I want to find one – out taken or taken out of context comment from Joe Burrow that I could hang my hat on and be like, I hate what he said there, and that'll be it just fuel the eternal hatred. I, I don't think you'd get that from Joe Burrow, but I mean Or any any Jamar Chase or Higgins have done some or, trash talking, which is part of football and people have made it. I just want to see inside and particularly the Bengals, I just want to see inside so I could find like in my head think I could find ways to like take them down from the outside. Like All now right. I know their secrets. I know it doesn't give away anything. But yeah. I want to take them down from the inside. I want to spoil and poison that franchise. I would love. I would. I would love to watch That's the Dolphins. I would love to watch the Dolphins. Um, the Dolphins. The Dolphins. And the reason I said the Dolphins is because they got a storyline with the quarterback in concussion. It's a good story. Yeah, it's an um, interesting one. Tyreek Hill um, is a guy who's always saw about how fast he is, and, yeah. and he's doing other social their media. Their coach things. is kind of a personality. The, their coach is very he's a quirky weird guy, and how he does things and schedules his day. Yeah. They just got Jalen Ramsey, who wears a ski mask, <laughs> while doing interviews with a visor on. Like he does, he's a strange guy. So to me, the Dolphins have a lot that you can. And it's, and it's Miami, South Beach. Like it's going to be good weather. They're going to yeah. be able to go different places. I think the scenery. It'd be a good choice. Place. It'd be a good choice. I like the Dolphins. How about you, Tyvis? Um, I'd like to see Sam Fran. Sam Fran got pretty much similar to things to what G. Bush just said. I mean, Kyle Shanahan is. 
he's older, but he's uh, yeah. he's very young when it comes to being with the players and stuff like that. Some of the things that he does and how he conducts practices and keep things fun. Uh, Seattle keeps things very fun and very competitive. Everybody would love Pete Carroll on there. Um, but if you're talking about a storyline, I actually wanted to see Buffalo because I want to see this Diggs and Allen storyline uh, unfold right in front of us. If they really do got beef like yeah. that. I think the first team you mentioned is the most interesting of the ones, and that's San Francisco. Because look at their quarterback situation. You had Brock Purdy come in last year. He played great, but he got that he got an injury at the end of the year. But he's a seventh round pick. Like we all feel I think most of us feel like, well, Maybe it was an anomaly. Maybe it's Shanahan. Can he do it again? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, he traded a boatload to get Trey like Lance. Yep. He's been hurt for two years in a row. He's barely played. When he's played, he hasn't been particularly. Like, Brock Purdy looked way better than Trey Lance. Yeah. That Plus, they brought in Sam Darnold. So, like, maybe he's in the competition, too. I doubt it. But who knows? So, that could be an interesting. Uh, plus, you got, you know, Christian McCaffrey there. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of talent. You got Bosa. You got a ton of interesting things. I think from that team, I think another team that would be really fascinating on hard knocks, of course, is the Jets because yeah. they've got a great roster yeah. and you've got Aaron Rodgers after his entire career in Green Bay, very similar to when Brett Favre went to the Jets at the end of his career before going to Minnesota. But you have Aaron Rodgers going to the Jets after an entire career in Green Bay. He's a, like a total weirdo, right? He does all these bizarre things. Yeah. So he stirs up a lot of controversy. And he's gonna not really want to. He 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 doesn't really like talking to the media except for his guys in the media. So that's an interesting angle of it. Plus, you can follow the Zach Wilson story. The guy was a high draft pick. Yep. Now he's a bust. Everybody's making fun of him. <laughs> you know, can he revive his career after Rodgers is done? You got uh, what's his name? They're running back Bryce uh, Hall. Brees Brees Hall. Hall. Yeah. Brees Hall. Brees Hall coming back from a serious knee injuries. Yeah, they you got, got Garrett Wilson. You got Sauce Gardner. They got, they got I mean, that, that's a lot of good storylines on is. that that's team. A very Plus, their good. coach. He's got yeah. the bald head. You know. Coach Do you think Sala. the NFL? Because they're one of the teams that are eligible. Yeah, and they've said we don't want it. He, he don't want to be. He's Robert Sala is their coach. Yeah, he doesn't want, want anything to do with it. Do you think the NFL? Sh and we'll move on to Gavin Williams in one second. Yeah. Do you think the NFL should be able to? enforce a team to be on they can times. they don't want to but they can so it's the jets the commanders the bears and who was the fourth one well the, they're looking at the lions again now who was on it last year because they Campbell were good on there care. but i have no interest in seeing the no lions i don't want to see them twice no the, and the commanders was the last one you didn't mention commanders. no i said commanders uh jets bears and who was the fourth one can you put that out of those back three up? the jets is the most interesting yeah i mean mm -hmm. There's and no that, like, and they would force the. Jets I know to Justin do Fields is still kind of he's got to prove it. Obviously, a second year. Mm. Same to the other team. Same. And the passing part of his game still needs a lot of development. But there's no quarterback competition. Yeah. There's you know is he a big personality? I mean, how much of a personality is? Who he? you talking about, Garrett? No, Justin Fields. Oh, nah, he's just a you know, right. Like he doesn't seem like yeah, a big personality. Good. Who was the fourth team? The Saints. Yeah, and well, they already did uh, Derek Carr yeah, kind of. Derek Carr was, he was uninteresting like, the first time. Yeah, yeah. he's not going to be any more. If, interesting if they, this time. if it's out of these, it's going to be the Jets. The Jets are the. By it's far, either the Jets or the Commanders. Plus, it's New York people. Yeah. You know, there's more going to be more people watching. The Jets are by far the best one, I think, of the four that can be forced. And 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 I, I mean, it's the, it's the NFL. What do you mean they force people to talk <laughs> yeah, after the game? Exactly. Like <laughs> you got beat fifty to nothing. How's it feel? Yeah, you better come up right. with something. <laughs> All right, we'll see what they do with that. All right, let's switch gears to baseball, guys. Um, I got the little league team here. All the guys are here, ready to go. We, we got a game tonight. To also tonight, you know, maybe you want to come down to Rocky River Little League and watch our game, but then later. The Guardians are playing, of course, and Gavin Williams is making his Major League debut. Earlier the season, the Guardians called up Logan Allen. Then they called up Tanner Bybee, who are two of their best pitching prospects. Gavin Williams is coming up tonight. He's been absolutely lights out at Double A AA and Triple A. He was the Guardians' first-round draft pick in the 2021 season. Signed a two and a quarter million dollar signing bonus. They compared him to who? Garrett Cole. Woo! Well, his, <laughs> They're comparing the way he he, he pitches. Woo! Now that's a, that's a and similar size and stature. The way he th he's big. Uh, he's a big kid. G, woo! He's a big kid, a and lot. he pitch, the way he throws the ball looks similar to Garrett Cole. Now Garrett Cole's one of the best pitchers in baseball. He's been a great pitcher for a long time. Especially he got a long way to go. But it's very exciting because. Logan Allen and Tanner Bybee have come up to the big leagues. They, they both pitched well, well yeah, but well. this guy's the best of the bunch. 
And he just got drafted two years ago out of, uh, where do you go, East Carolina? East Carolina, correct. Went to East Carolina. Everybody's expecting him to be the next great Guardians pitcher. Uh, if you if you look at, you know, uh, Gavin Williams coming on onto this roster, yeah. do you believe that <clears throat> they could be moving up the roster? Like, we naturally per- perceive that, you know, guys that you bring up are going to be at the bottom of your rotation because in the yeah. playoffs, you want to play your best guys. I mean, do you think that they could, these guys, hit you, whether it be Allen, uh, Bybee, or Gavin Williams, do you think that they can put enough ending, innings together and have a large enough sample size where Tito says, if we do make the playoffs, we might want to move one of these guys up to the higher rotation? Yes, and they may have no choice. I mean, think about this. If Tristan McKenzie, the Tristan McKenzie, the word came out yesterday afternoon, he's out, Seven, I think, two months. Yeah, at months. least. At least. Woo! Right? Now, I know. I the said injury the same thing. he has, it's his UCL, correct? Yeah. Okay. That injury often leads to a more serious surgery. And if he has surgery at some point, then he's done for the year. So let's say, in theory, Tristan McKenzie misses the rest of the season. Hopefully not. Let's say Shane Bieber gets traded, which I think will happen. Not a guarantee. Now, you say, well, if they trade Shane Bieber and McKenzie doesn't pitch the rest of the year, the Guardians won't make the playoff. If that were a normal baseball season and the Guardians played in a normal division, (laughs) that would be true. However... The American League Central is the worst division maybe in the history of baseball. The Minnesota Twins are currently in first place. They're two games under 500. That's crazy. I don't think I've ever seen that before that I can recall, and my recall for baseball is pretty good. (laughs) It is. Now, it doesn't mean it hasn't happened. I just don't remember that happening. Look at the standings. The Guardians are four games under 500, and they're one game out of first. They are tied in the loss column, and we're not even at the halfway point. You played 72 games. You got uh, 90, exactly 90 games left in the season. So even without McKenzie, and even if they trade Bieber, (laughs) and if they do trade Bieber, it probably won't happen for another month. But even if those things happen, they might still make the playoffs. Why? Because Gavin Williams, Bybee, and Allen may dominate. Who else do they have? The rest of their rotation is Savale. Quantrill if he comes back. Okay. Now, I don't know how Gavin Williams is going to pitch, and we don't know how Bybee's going to pitch the rest of the year or Allen. They may struggle. Gavin Williams could be back in the minors in three weeks. Let's say he gets crushed in his first three, four starts. Mm -hmm. They could send him back. But if he pitches to his capabilities, and his capabilities are through the roof excellent, we could potentially see Gavin Williams, Tanner Bybee, and Logan Allen, all rookies, start to start a you know, the first three games of the playoffs if they were able to make when it. These, Especially if Bieber's traded. When these guys pitch. Yeah, if Bieber's here, Bieber will pitch game yeah. one. When but. these guys pitch, how yeah. many innings are they usually pitching? It's not like it's more seven, about, right? It's, it's more like about four. pitches than it is about innings. Okay. I, it Generally, when you have a young pitcher that comes up, he's going to throw five to six innings, generally. But it depends on the pitch count. You know, they'll be very careful with Gavin Williams, like they've been with Bybee and like they've been with Allen. The longer you're up, the more they let you go. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying. So that that factors in, but it's really about pitches. If you get through six innings and you've only and, the, and Gavin Williams, let's say Gavin Williams comes out tonight and through and he's pitching great, and through six innings he's got 71 pitches. Well, they'll let him pitch the seventh inning, maybe even an eighth inning. Mm-hmm. It really depends on pitching on on the pitches, but they're going to be careful because you know their other. So the Guardians. Tanner Bybee and, and was actually their third best pitching prospect heading into this season. Behind, now, now and he's excellent. Now is he one behind now? Gavin Williams? No, he's still one. And they have a kid named Daniel Espino, but Espino's been hurt, and Tommy, he's hurt. He's out Tommy, for the season. Yeah, Tommy, yeah, yeah. So we, you know, and we've seen McKenzie. McKenzie is very slight of build, yeah. very very thin, and they're worried. About, he's had injuries in the minors, and now he's been injured twice this year. Now, Gavin Williams is a big, strong dude. This can guy I, is. Can I give you the physical stats <laughs> real I'm get, quick? I'm get, what is he like? Six five, two forty. So, according to MLB.com and yeah. the top one hundred prospects list. Yeah. So, to give you just an idea of where he lands, not just in the Guardians. He's the Guardians' top-rated prospect. He's the number sixteen overall prospect in baseball. Right. And he's the number four pitching prospect in baseball. He's you listed have the three at guys six, ahead of him. The three guys ahead of him: Kyle Harrison in San Francisco, Andrew Painter. Phillies. In Philadelphia, uh, Yuri Perez, who's already in the he's majors, the so he's with the Marlins. Yeah. He, uh, sorry, with the Marlins, yeah, yeah, and he's in the majors. And then Gavin Williams, number four. Yeah. So, the, and Taj Bradley uh, with the Rays. Excuse who's me, in the majors too? One ahead of him. Yeah. yeah. So, 
he's a as highly regarded a prospect as you'll come around, yeah. in, not just in Cleveland, but in all the no, majors. No, big time. He is listed at 6'6", 250, Jeez. and on Wee, the scouting the big, grade the, scale. The big unit? I thought he was 6'5", 240. <laughs> yeah. bigger. Okay, go ahead. And on the scouting grade scale, which it's not out of 100, which always annoys me. Right, it's it's different. A, yeah, go ahead. He's graded a 65 out of 65 on a fastball, a 55 mm. out of 65 on his curveball, a 55 out of 65 on his slider, a 55 on his changeup. Overall, 55, which is unbelievably high. Yeah, I mean, to be a 55 on four pitches as a rookie who just got drafted two years ago you know is what I, stupid. It's absurd. You know what I'll say? Yeah. We're going to find out tonight. Well, that's it. You could be the biggest prospect in the world. It doesn't <laughs> matter unless you do it in the big leagues. So that's my question for you, Tyler. He was I'll great in college. You. He dominated in the minors. Thomas, I'll start with you. We'll go around the horn. Man. What are your expectations tonight? Well, what you, one what you talking about? I need at least by, four to five strikeouts. By the way, well, you better have more than that. By the way, <laughs> keep in mind. See, I'm, I'm trying to set it low. You, you, keep wow. Keep in mind, they're facing the worst team in baseball. Or that one is of the two true. Worst teams in baseball. That's true. You're facing Oakland. Who has with, no line. With that being said, six strikeouts, and I even, I'll allow one run. I'll allow one. I'll allow one. That's go great. ahead, G. How and many I, innings? I, I, I just think he has uh, to It's his first start. They're, they're probably about five. I, I think he needs – I would like to see seven strong innings. I would you also, that? Wow. I, would, <laughs> I mean, look, I, I would also like – you know, I, I told you what I want to see for Josh, Deshaun Watson. You did say time. that. Yeah, you did. Hey, you know, I want to – I'm to be practical here. <laughs> I, well, if he, gets to, if he gets his little, you know, little six, uh, seven innings, I think he should rack up about six, seven strikeouts. And the thing that I'm looking for most is how do you pitch when you're in, in, in traffic? How do you pitch when you got a couple runners on? Are you still going to be aggressive at the plate? Are you still going to be trying to pound the zone? Or are you going to lose some of your control? So I think one thing with, with Gavin Williams is, you know, I don't know if I subscribe to this, but a lot of baseball people talk about guys going out there, getting hit very hard the first time, and then they just go into the tank and they were never the same. Now, I don't understand how you could got to that point if that was your that. philosophy. Like how you can't, you, you know, <laughs> that if you if think you, that way, yeah. you're not going to be a good player. No, I agree. So, you know, I, I think if he could keep his control and show that he could keep his emotions together, I he mean, should be, Tito should have him in the lineup more and he, he'll probably end up staying up here, but he can't <laughs> be wavering because Tito will just put another veteran in there. How many strikeouts you say? Phil? Six, six strikeouts, seven innings, no earned runs. I say no about no ERA. How uh, many runs? Yeah, how many runs? Three, four. Oh, that's man. a lot. Nah, I was about to say, God. No, I just say he was no, uh, Nolan Ryan. Six, look, I tell you, six Johnson. innings, six strikeouts, right. one run. Let, let me get. Let's get something straight here. <laughs> Gavin Williams has dominated in AAA, correct? Mm-hmm. Most of the Oakland Athletics lineup are AAA players. <laughs> oh my. That's the reality. Here we go. Okay, here they have. <laughs> two, maybe three guys who belong as starters in the majors. The rest of their lineup is guys who should be bench or in playing in AAA, where he is dominated. I'm expecting a huge performance. We've seen Bybee and Allen both come up and be great right off the bat. Mm. Now, you never know about a kid's mental makeup, right? But he play, pitched in the College World Series. He's been hyped since he came, since college. I'm not worried about that. I'm expecting him to see. Now, I don't think he will go as many innings because I think he's going to strike out a ton of guys. So I got him six innings, not seven, because I think early in the game, he may be a little pumped up. I think he'll be overthrowing his fastball early and have some command issues, but then he'll settle. He's going to strike out 12 guys in six innings. I got him giving up one run. One run. 12 Ks, seven lot. base runners. God, are you serious? Have we had a pitcher do that this year? What did, Ty, what did Tatter Bybee do in his first start? He was great. They get seven strikeouts. I'll, I'll confirm, but I believe it was seven. Man, this guy's averaging, this, this guy's averaging, I think, I believe. We got the same thing, but like you double it by strikeouts. About 13, 14 strikeouts per nine innings Dang. in the minors. And the A's are a minor league team. You you know more than us. 14? Hey, it doesn't mean it's going to work out. He could give up seven runs for all we, I know we go see. <laughs> I, I how, many are, how many are runs did you say? I got one run, okay. seven base runners, six innings, <laughs> 12 strikeouts. 
Go ahead, Mike. What do you, you got? You can't bet <laughs> I'm talking on about, You're talking about the Duke of Ninja. <laughs> yeah, Bybee, Bybee in his first start the of the beans. season came on April yeah. 26th against Colorado. <laughs> yeah. Five and two-thirds innings, six hits, one run, eight strikeouts, 91 points. I mean, it's not much different. It's four more strikeouts than Bybee. Now, okay. the Rockies are a bad team, too. Okay. I well, mean, it's the, it is the A, so I, but they've been playing well lately. No, they were. They had a good week, and now they've lost like six in a row again. Uh, are, we, and, it, and it took, a, one, and it took us me. 10 innings to beat them. Or did it, what, well, it's yeah. just the Guardians' lineup stakes. I didn't say the Guardians would have scored a ton of runs. <laughs> so, I said he's going to dominate. Are, they, are the A's worse than the Kansas City Royals? Kansas I think City's so. They're, they, they're equal, right? In terms of the standings, I think they have the same record or – within a game of each other. Mm -hmm. I think they're worse. Um, but Kansas City's really awful. They're both going to lose. Uh-huh. They'll both lose over 100 games. I think. I still think the A's are still on pace. They're both on pace to be around. This 1962 Mets were 40 and 120, which is the worst record in the history of baseball, well, in the modern history of baseball. And But they were an expansion team, remember? Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, neither of these teams are expansion teams. I mean, the World Se- the, the Royals were just in the World Series, what, eight years ago? 2014 and 15. And right. Went, and eight, went back. Eight and nine years ago, and they won the World Series. But obviously, every pretty much every player from those teams is gone, except for one or two guys. They stink. Oakland stinks. They're both terrible. Is uh, Bo Naylor in the lineup today? I would assume so. I would assume so. He has not gotten a hit yet. Uh, that's what I was about to say. Is he get, does he get to hit get worked up about it. It's been <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I was going to say, and Earl said it this morning. I actually agree with Earl. He did. I think that. he hits a home run his first hit today. His first at bat, home run for Bo Naylor. Call what are y'all? Who is pitching? There is some positivity who going on today. Who is pitching for tonight? I mean, it doesn't Woo! all their pitchers stink, but who's pitching for them tonight? According to ESPN, the pitching matchup says it is Gavin Williams versus Paul Blackburn. Uh, he's given, okay. only given up two home runs all year. I need yeah, to. but he's barely – he just came off the – he missed the whole yeah, season. Yeah, he's only pitched like, 21 innings. I need yeah. to put together a parlay the way y'all Paul Blackburn me. had not pitched like the last two years until a couple weeks <laughs> 16 ago. 16 parlay. I need to win 12 strikeouts, Bo Naylor first home run. Listen, 12 Man. strikeouts is a bold <laughs> prediction. It's not common for a guy in his first major That's why you strike out 12. Yeah, but man. it certainly happened with top pitchers in the past. Y'all hear it, boy. Put, put, yeah. Place Listen, the bet. Kerry Wood of the Cubs in his in his fifth major league start struck out twenty, and that was against a great lineup. And this kid is com- maybe I can't say he's coming up with the, the same hype that Kerry Wood had. That's not fair, but he's coming up with a lot of hype. And in in baseball circles, what time is this game today? What time the game? It's, time a, it's a seven ten first pitch. And also keep in mind, rookies. No, it's here. Seven ten here, Steve. I'm, I'm Come on. Ooh-wee. Steve tries chiming in one time on sports and got the total wrong. <laughs> Steve, Steve never opens his mouth when it comes to sports context. What did he say? It was a different time. I said seven ten first pitch. He goes, "It's a West Coast game." I'm like, "No, Steve. It's it's three." That blocks, was last week, Steve. Three blocks up the road Steve, here, buddy. Steve, uh, Steve but no, rookies who make their major league debut yeah. oftentimes have a lot of success. I know Jay told us that there's more film on these guys coming out of college, but until MLB hitters have actually seen. Their fastball, you could read it's 98, but not all 98 mile hour fastballs are created equally. The dip on their sliders, their breaking balls. I expect a lot from Gavin Williams tonight. I really yeah, do. Yeah, now, some of these guys, I haven't looked it over yet, but I'm sure some, a couple of these guys in the A's lineup have seen Gavin Williams in the minors. They said that the over-under for strikeouts for Gavin Williams is set at five and a half. Oh, love it. Take that's the easy over. <laughs> that's money back. Yeah. Right that's easy over. Like, yeah, that's, that's an easy I mean, all of us said that, find though. That yeah. right now, all of, that's what that's uh, Steve Becker just texts. Yeah. <laughs> on FanDuel? I don't know what he's using. I don't know. Steve, but, Texas, what happened? I'm, I'm putting money on that right yeah, now. Yeah. That's real. <laughs> Yo, all right, wow. So, anyway, so I my hope expect- so. Listen, my expectations so. couldn't be any higher for Gavin Williams. By the way, if he doesn't pitch great tonight, don't make you know, don't go over the top about it. It's one start. But I expect him to come to the big leagues and dominate right away. That's my expectation. We'll hope it happens. Did the other three did the, the other three prospects that's ahead of him? A painter hasn't pitched in the big leagues yet. He's been hurt. Yuri Perez came up and I believe was excellent in his first start, if I remember correctly. For the Marlins? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was really good. He was really good. The first guy you mentioned, I actually don't know him. <laughs> I left the page. Let me go back to it. Uh, uh, I need to. I'm Taj Bradley, I think, struggled in his first start. 
And Andrew uh, Painter for the Phillies? No, Painter spit was hurt earlier in the season. Yeah, he's well, he's only in Double A right now. Yeah, the pitch it was Yuri Perez. Him, I know. Andrew Painter. Yeah, you mentioned a guy with the Royals, I think. <laughs> no, uh, Kyle Harrison with the Giants. Uh, you see, him, I don't know. He he's must tri- be lower AAA. down the minors. Is he? Yeah, Triple A. Oh, he is in Triple A. Yeah. And, I, and, I Tanner, and Tanner Bybee and Logan Alley's first starts was really good. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hey. Well, you know, it, hey. Twelve it, strikeouts it is, then. I, I, think, I, think, I think we have to temper some things because, you know, what more were they going to do? Like, think about it. They, they're they not going to really spend any more money. They really don't have any reinforcements, so to speak. So, you you pretty yeah. much got to hey, play the young guys. We were saying you got to call, call guys up. Well, they called up their best catching prospect, and Boom. now they've called up their best p- pitching prospect. That's what they need to do. That's what this team doesn't spend enough money because the owner's cheap. And so it's the more, hope is that your best prospect <laughs> can out. It, it's more palatable now because at least you can see the, the, the you know, the fruits of your labor. What we've right. been saved, what right. we won't trade well, away. Here's what you've been <laughs> missing. And it's a perfect time to introduce those players because the, when the, the only thing that keeps you from keeps you playing vets is you have a track record with them and right. you know what, they, what they're about. Sometimes once again, we talk about change in people's lives. Change comes and you have to adapt on the fly and people have a very difficult time doing that. That's true. And especially a veteran manager like Terry Francona. He's used to go with veterans. I think over the years he's adjusted and has done a better job with young players. But uh, he still, yeah, a lot of guys, you want to lean on a guy that you know has done there, has been there and done that before. All right, we'll leave the Guardians for now, but but everybody should be locked into this game tonight. I know as soon as I get home, I'm, I'm locked into this I'm, game. We will discuss I, it I'm in sure length we'll tomorrow as well. So Should be perfect timing, because our game will probably be over right around 7 o'clock. And then we go home and watch I, the Guardians. And I do want to remind people before we get into the next topic that yeah. coming up in about 20 minutes, I went out with Bull yesterday to his Little League game, the biggest game of my career. Yes. Mic'd him up, shot it. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but I'm telling you, Coach Bull is very different than Adam the Bull in the host chair. You guys will enjoy the second side. <laughs> They're going to tell us the real behind the scenes story. We're going to get the real behind the scenes story? I guess so. I guess we'll find yeah. out. About it, it, about it came out minutes. good. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty pleased. Okay. All we right. have a two-part basketball topic yes. today. The first one will take 30 seconds. Did you guys know the NBA drafts tomorrow? Yes. You knew it mm, yeah. before they said before Mike said something this morning. Yeah, we've been talking about it on the radio in Columbus. No, okay. I knew it was coming up, but I you know, know you guys actually day. talk about basketball in mm-hmm. Columbus. Yes, you talk about anything else besides the Buckeyes. Yeah, we talk about. We talk about Scooty Pen every day. We talk about Scooty Pen every day. No, we talk about every. We hit every sport. <laughs> now, how Mike? you think? How you think I knew about Columbus? The Columbus Blue Jackets? Because I gotta know that. All stuff. right. What are you doing? No, no Greg Oden breakdowns down there. No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah. Greg, you can catch Greg at the at the shoe on Saturdays, right behind the bench. All right. right. He oh, there. he hangs out on the field. Yeah. Yeah, he got he got the little seats right behind the the bench. Uh, he be like, you can't really tell. I guess you can't miss him. Yeah, seven feet tall. He this, try to be incognito, but he's six really like, like he seems like he has. Yeah, a, he still got the full beard oh, and all man, that. Yeah, all right. I mean, a seven footer can't be incognito. <laughs> nah, you, you can't, know, can't. What are you gonna do? Blo- put on a blonde s- wig? Se- seven footers can never be CIA agents. No, <laughs> like nah, it won't can you work. imagine? Like you just it don't really work out. Like I'm going to Russia to be like a spy. They're like, hold on. I'm mad. What's missing here? I'm mad. <laughs> he had injuries, man. He was going to take the league by storm. He could, yeah, but he couldn't stay healthy. And, that, and that's with Webb Benaya. You worry about that too. Well, be, oh, yeah, cut that out. Cut that out. You cut worry if the guy's seven foot cut six, out. right? So, seven four? five, but it's okay. Seven did you five. know, Bull, did you know the NBA right. draft was Thursday? Honestly, I had no, until you <laughs> mentioned it to me yesterday, I had no clue the NBA draft was Thursday. Where y'all living under because a rock? Because the Cavs don't have a first round pick. They got a 42nd. Yeah, yeah. But what are the, it's I the mean, 49th. What, what are the odds of getting sorry, a useful I'm player sorry. in 49? Yeah, I'm, I'm taking, I'm taking some. Did you know? Listen, they got 49. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm taking some eighth grader from Avon Lake. <laughs> I'm grader. drafting Jason's kid. I, I, I'm a stash him. Future right to Jason's <laughs> I'm a, kid. I'm a stash him. Yeah, Jason's Europe. son. Is <laughs> <laughs> but we will do. In all seriousness, we'll do tomorrow. We'll do a full NBA draft breakdown. We'll try to figure out every mock draft at 49 is someone completely different. There's no consensus I mean, that's just whatsoever. Silly. Who's paying I, attention to a mock well, draft? Well, you, you know why I actually also had to know? Because yeah. Ohio State got Bryce Sensiball in there, and we was so talking when, about So where's he getting drafted? They got him anywhere going from 22 to 49. 
that's a pretty big gap there. Yeah. 22 to 49. Yeah. Well, the, well, he's one of the players that he's really good offensively, <laughs> but yeah. he, he defensively, he's not time good at all. That's like you get pulled he, over. He like just <laughs> was lazy on 22 to sir, 49. Sir, yeah. sir, do you know how fast you were going? I don't know, man. I know it's a school zone. I was going anywhere from 35 to 90. <laughs> Like, you, you know over 70, that's jail time. Like, come on, that's a yeah. wide variety, yeah. bro. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, so so yes. we'll do a full preview tomorrow. I know, Bo, you may not be as much into the second-round prospects. Earl, myself, uh, and Anthony will come. Is Earl into it? Earl, do you care about the NBA draft? Uh, uh, a little bit. Not only because Mike had me do some research on uh, for content. Earl was too busy studying NASCAR stats over there. Or, well, or, it's become very controversial. Who's going to go number two? It was Scoot Henderson all this no, time, it, but it, now it's the Brandon Hornets Miller. The came out and confirmed they're taking Brandon Miller. Okay. So, Brandon Miller's going two. Scoot's going to go they three. They came out and confirmed it? Why would they do that? They told Woj that they are they they're taking lose. him. In the, the Vegas odds, it's now minus 400 that it goes Wembenyama. Yeah, but those Miller, odds are always Henderson. wrong for draft. For the draft. No, they it ain't. Just, just no, it ain't. They, get it wrong. They, got, they were wrong <laughs> last year about who was going first, yeah. right? No, yeah, but they didn't. Were they? A... Who went first last year? I don't even remember. Who was? Who did? Paolo Banquero. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He he rookie of the year. Yeah. So who's the kid that got hurt? Jibo- you think Chet Holmgren? Was that last year or two years ago? That was last, last year. Last year. What team is he on? I don't even the know. The Thunder. Remember, I came in and said oh, that the right. Thunder so gonna make the playoffs. That's why everybody's through? excited about the Thunder. Yeah. Because they were much improved that year, and yeah. they got this kid. And they have two lottery picks healthy. this year. So. Can stay so, we'll yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. We'll do your full NBA draft preview. Do not worry. Right. I know Bull may not pay attention to it. Jason does. G, well, we'll be locked into it tomorrow. I mean, and we'll lock in. Listen, yeah. the Cavs have to improve somehow. There are players that have been <laughs> in the second round that make a Nikola difference. Nikola Jokic. The Cavs have – right. Uh, Draymond Green was second-round pick, wasn't he? Yep. Yeah, those are the two best second-round picks of the last decade. So, so – but the Cavs have done a poor job with their second round. The Cavs, when the last player they got in the second round that was used? That, that's why I was confused. We, said, we was talking to Jason. He said they've developed people. And I'm like, Dean Wade, a.k.a. Johnny Bravo, is not good. <laughs> Who? Like, come on, Johnny. <laughs> and he's like, well, the only thing he can't do is shoot. Well, <laughs> I, I would me. say this. I you would say this. You just threw that sound effect. <laughs> Gee, what I would say to that is, so him and Lamar Stevens, they have turned them from nothing to a minor piece, at least. Regular season piece. But, yes, they're not guys that you feel comfortable in a big spot with. At this point, maybe they can become. Who knows? But they have done nothing with their second-round pick. Nothing. They, had, now, th- they had three okay, second-round no, picks last it. year, and yeah. the most contribution they got. And a lot. And, and this Who is, were their three uh, second-round picks last year? It was the Australian guy with the mullet, something Weaver. So he didn't play. The big guy, Dick, yeah, Dick. Giop. Who never was over here, and then Baby what, Mobley. Or they Big ha- Mobley. Didn't they have somebody named like Deconte or Deconte? Yeah, Deonte, Deonte, Jop. Yeah. That's a bad sign when we don't even know his name. <laughs> These guys, let's see. It's a uh, Desana Shop son. Wow, that's yeah. that's oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's how old we are. Oh my goodness. I have a, so. I have a, I have a Des- Deshauna Jop bobblehead, and I thought it was that's like. Sad. <laughs> well, we thought he was going to be a good player. It, we just it didn't it, work it, out. It didn't really work out for us. So, all so right. We'll so, we'll do the full draft tomorrow. There is some, but, you know, the Cavs allegedly are hoping to trade into the first round. Yeah, so we'll with, get into all With who? Tomorrow, I promise. Who knows? <laughs> with we'll who? It, but, but, but in the end, <laughs> with what? Thing, like, before we move <laughs> on here, in the end, like, whether you have the 28th pick or the 45th pick, at that point, you're, I don't know that you're any more you, you likely pull it, to get you, a better You pull player. it for strong. Right. You you got, hoping for, you hoping for a generational player or an all-star out of that group of people who you didn't think. That's where yeah. the scout comes in at. It ain't just, everybody got consensus on the top 10 picks. As long as it ain't Anthony Bennett, I'm good. Is it? Yeah, well. <laughs> is it Bam Adebayo? Wasn't he a second round pick? Yep. No, he was the 13th pick. I thought he was, oh. I thought he was second well, round. I thought no, he, he was, was late, later late on, too. Guy. All right, next. So, yeah, before we get to your baseball package, Tyvis sent us a text over the Maybe it was the weekend, whenever it was. Ty, by the way, let me, let, let me take people behind the <laughs> No, please. So, no. <laughs> we have about 7,000 chat groups. On, oh. Now, we've kind of pared it down. Oh, my oh, goodness. My, most <laughs> of the time, most of our group chatting is now done in what we call, <laughs> the good, what's the name good, of the group? Good, bad group. Because group. Yeah, it good. was for The bets. good bet group, right. We call it the good bet group, all right? And that group chat has, we've eliminated the people that don't have iPhones from that chat. No offense. <laughs> Steve Steve K is out, Mike's out, and Steve Becker's Steve out. Steve ain't got an iPhone. Because you can't name. Oh, is Steve in? Director, Director Steve's in it, yeah. Oh, oh Director Steve. Yeah. Steve Becker and Mike Polk are out because they don't have iPhones and we don't want the green nonsense. We just and you can't, you can't name the group. Got an iPhone? 
You can't name Lock. the group if you Lock. if you don't have an iPhone. So in the Good Bet group, that's our group. So it's it's the three of us. It's Mike. It's Anthony. It's Steve. It's Earl. Jason. Jay, Brad. It's, a, it's everyone that's not here. That's true. Yeah. No. Although Brad almost never responds to anything. You know, he did Neither this weekend. Did this say weekend. He did this weekend. He Jay wished does. everyone a happy Father's Day this weekend. That's <laughs> Out true. Out of the blue. But most of the talking in Man, that group, of <laughs> most of the talking in that group is done by Tyvis, <laughs> Jason, Mike, and me. You. And what, me. About, what about me? You G. Bush G. comes in like five hours later. Oh, I should say G. G. Bush, like five hours later, he then responds to all the different topics. <laughs> They're like, that was three days ago, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what is that response to? I don't know. You gotta so, go back through. Tyvis, so at least <laughs> once a day, there is a post in this chat group from some rando on Twitter who, who uh, like, we never heard of. And Tyvis will tweet some, like, rumor in the NBA or baseball. Uh, and he'll be like, are you guys buying this? Is this credible? And it's from, like, Leroy Horde's goat. <laughs> Wait, that, that account today actually yeah. does have a tiny ounce of, like. <laughs> what was that one? What was the one today? The, the ghost, ghost of Leroy. Leroy which is the PFT of for Leroy. part of my taste, Dead Dog, it. which breaks news. It, yeah. It, it. And, and time just goes, got, it's discredible. It's got a bunch of activity on it. It could be. It could have been Jay LeBron's burner account. He's tweeting hey. like more than Cleveland or whatever that one is. Hey, All these randos. I like I like it, man. You 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 It's to great. It. I'm tapped in. Great. What? I'm, I'm tapped in. I'm to, and, and if you get in trouble, you can always say I ran it by them dudes. I ran <laughs> by the veterans. That's I right. asked Boo, was this legit? He gave me the green light. <laughs> the okay, Boo. so so only because we gotta get your thing in, Bull. Yeah, I'll yeah, let yeah. this go. But Tyvis put something in the group chat this weekend. Right. And he essentially sparked an idea. And I forget the exact text. It was this was not a silly text. He okay. asked about the future of NBA big men and can anyone kind of be like Jokic? And it made me think. And I'm gonna ask Tyvis this first. And we'll go around. Tyvis, we watched the NBA Finals. We saw the Nuggets win. Is there any lesson we learned from the team construction <coughs> of the Nuggets, from the way they play, to the way they're coached, to the way they develop, to their patience, to their transactions? Anything we could take away from what we saw the Nuggets do? over the last couple of seasons that accumulated in a championship this year that we think the Cavs can learn from and implement into their program and system moving forward? Well, the number one thing is that they, they stuck together. You know, obviously, Nikola Jokic, he been doing – the crazy thing is Nikola Jokic been the same kind of guy he's, he is now. He's been like that. He's just kind of been washed away because he kept getting eliminated in the playoffs. You know, they went up against the Warriors, and Draymond Green kind of had his number, so we kind of forgot about him. But Jamal Murray, he got injured. But Jamal Murray has always been such a good shooter. Michael Porter Jr. has always been a shooter. But what the key thing you could take away is you got to ask more of these big men nowadays. You know, these guys, obviously, you know, back in the 90s, it was about post moves, you know, being in the paint, defending the cup, and having the post moves. Now you move forward. Now these big mans have jump shots on them. What Nikola Jokic has just done has put the ball in his hands, and now he's become more of a point guard at center. So what it's doing is now it's pulling centers out of the paint. Now you got guys that's opening up this, the paint for those backdoor cuts, which is more efficient shots. Like Michael Porter Jr. had a terrible. He's, we, he went from being a sharp shooter in the finals to being a, a backdoor cutter and getting dunks and stuff like right. that. So I think what Nikola Jokic has done is he's challenged a lot of centers around the NBA. You know, hey, we need to be more facilitators as well. We can't just sit in the paint and, and hog clog the paint up. We got to be able to come out, be able to dish the ball. And if you could do that, I think that opens up a lot of offense for other guys. Instead of guys just being all shooters, they can be two-way players. You can shoot and you can cut and hit, get the backdoor cuts too. Gee. I think I think what we learned, I'm going to piggyback on what Cyber said a little bit. You look at Miami and Bam Adebayo and what he did to his metamorphosis in the playoffs. Look what he did. He he, he goes from being a guy in the, in the regular season where he's just, you know, you know maybe hit an elbow jumper, maybe get on a rebound, defensive uh, intensity, being an anchor in the paint. You go to the playoffs, now Bam Adebayo, um, he's, he not only steps his game up, but Eric Spolstra was genius enough and, and had enough leeway to give him to let him now bring the ball up to court, let him initiate the offense. And I think that's what propelled them to get into the finals. But on the other end, you look at uh, Jokic, and, and Tyvis said something that I thought is important, that you, you, nowadays you got to demand more of your big men. I think one of the things that we saw is we're, 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 with an antiquated process, 
we are we believe that we have two twin towers and that Jaron Allen brings something this defense and different things like that. He does bring that. However, when you look at those numbers, 14 points a game, 10 rebounds. Those are on putbacks. Those are on rim running and lobs. Those are on what we would call, call garbage buckets. In order to beat these top teams, you're not only going to have to be able to guard Jokic, you're going to have to be able to get yours on the opposite end of the fort as well. Yeah. Because you can't uh, afford to play a Jared Allen against these guys, and these guys are going at them offensively and keep hammering and keep going at them the entire game. But defensively, they don't have to play them. They can sink off of them, say yeah. sag off, and now your guards, whether it's a <clears throat> Dar or Darius Garland, uh, Donovan Mitchell, or, or even a Mobley, things are now packed up and congested. So I, I think when you look at it, you're going to have to look at saying, okay, what do I want out of my center position? I, center is no longer a throwaway position that you just throw away and just get all these little guards. That's just not yeah. the way it works. So and by the way, Jared Allen can't defend Jokic anyway. No, so he has no ability to defend Jokic. <laughs> he can't do that anyway. Even though he was a good regular season defender. I think the thing you can potentially learn from the Nuggets is really only to be patient with the coach. Now that doesn't mean if you're patient, like if the Cavs are patient with JB, that it's going to pan out. But the Nuggets had a number of opportunities over the last few years where you wouldn't have been surprised if they had fired Michael Malone, and yet they didn't, right? And a big part, I think a big part of the reason that we learned this year is that Jokic and, and Malone appear to have an excellent relationship. And if your star believes in your coach, you're going to stick with the coach. Now, I don't know what Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, Evan Mobley think of J.B. Bickerstaff. I assume they all like him, but I don't, I don't know that to be certain. Uh, I don't think the Cavs will be as patient. I will give them credit. They have, you know, they could... A lot of us were calling for J.B. Bickerstaff to be fired after yes, the way we the season were. ended. And the Cavs have been patient, and maybe that will pay off. In terms of the roster makeup itself, I don't know that you can learn much because, yeah, I agree with what you guys are saying, that you need your center to do more. I don't know if there are that many big guys that are capable of doing what Jokic can do. No. Now, we're, we're to the point now where... You talk about it in the 90s. When I grew up as a kid, and, and you too, G, because yeah. you, you know, you're not as old as me, but you're a lot older than Tyvis. And when we grew up as kids, you, you never even thought about your, your big men taking outside shots. It was not even a, something that ever crossed your mind because it didn't really happen. Like Kareem taking the, the, the sky hook from the, the, maybe the top of the key or the foul line. Right. Like that was about as far out as any big guy went. Carl Malone, Carl Malone, like in the early, I say yeah. late eighties, early nineties, you started to see power forwards and centers right. move out of the, Patrick Ewing started to develop a jump shot. Yeah, but he wasn't <laughs> but, but no, he's, no, no, no. When <laughs> I say that, I'm, yeah. no I'm talking 12 to 15. Yes, <laughs> become a little more flexible, right. not but no, never take Not no threes. step backs or nothing. I mean, Jokic is a freak. There's not, like, even now, where there are more big guys that can do more things, he still stands out amongst these guys. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, and, I, and I'll let you guys get back to this, but I want to mention one thing about Jokic. In the history of the NBA playoffs, the guys who have played 50 games, he ranks in the top 20 of points, rebounds, assists, and f field goal percentage. He's per in, game? Per game. Yeah. In the playoffs. They've played 50 games. He ah. is a very good scorer. He's That's arguably cool. the greatest passing big of all time, and he's an elite rebounder. And he does right. not get credit because he's not super athletic. The dude he doesn't wakes look up good out there. And he has 17, 18 rebounds a game. And you don't even realize And it. you can't replicate that because there's no. not another Jokic. No, so, but yeah. what I would say is that every year that goes by, it feels like there's less and less of a place in the league for a player like Jared Allen. That's my point. Yeah. Right? Like, I just don't know that there's a spot for him in this NBA. And if you do have a guy like Jared Allen, it has to be with a team of shooters. Yeah. Right. It, it's yes. almost almost like the Mavericks in 2011. You could have another big. Dirk and Tyson Chandler played together, and that's a different era of basketball, but at least the e team. Yeah, right, but that's a long time ago at this point. I, I, and I know, but I'm saying the yeah. team construction, because Dirk was a stretch four. You have Chandler, then you have Jason Kidd who developed into a good shooter, Jason Terry, and their three was Sean Marion, who was a decent shooter. But they had everyone else on the floor could shoot. And if you're going to run pick and roll with a right. guy who's a defensive-minded, non-shooting center, 
who's in the middle of the lane for 48 or 46 of the 48 minutes he would be on the floor. You can't have anyone else right. with a foot in the paint or there's just no and, room to operate on and offense. And at this point, Mobley can't shoot from the outside really either. So Those two don't work. <laughs> yeah. And the rest of their team is not. Like, they don't have a million great shots. Obviously, Garland and Mitchell can shoot, but, you know, that's about it. And when you when you look at when you look at Jared Allen, that style of player, like how many guys are there in the NBA? It's fewer at this point and fewer that play and significant fewer. minutes. Fewer and fewer and fewer. Uh, Williams for the Celtics. Well, he play, He only plays 20, 27 <laughs> right, minutes a game. Like he don't play <laughs> now with Al Horford. Say, yeah. Clint Capella for the Hawks. Cle- yeah. Okay. Okay. Alperin Sagoon of the Houston Rockets, but he plays no defense. He's just a non. Right. What about the big. kid, the rookie from Atlanta? A Kongu? Yeah. Yeah, he, well, him and Capella switch, but they're the exact same rim runner defensive well, guy. And, right. and I was Gobert. Just, I, yes, that's the big one. Right, I was so going to call Anthony Towns. Is that's why that either. trade is terrible. I just. Right. It, it's horrible. There's not a if lot of a guys guy like that Jared play Allen, that way. He needs to be on a team like the Warriors. And like, by that's the way, the only all, place that fits. A couple of the other guys we mentioned there are young players that maybe will get better, maybe as they get older. Same thing with Mobley. Right now, Mobley's one of those guys to some degree, but we're hoping that his offensive game and his perimeter game he had, will it, develop. He as had go games, by. though, where he shot really Yeah, I mean, well. he's not useless from the outside, yeah. where Jared Allen just can't do anything it's nothing, from the outside. Yeah. All right, one last thing, one yeah. last point, then we'll get to your, your baseball thing here. Yeah. Another key takeaway I had, and Tyvis, I want you, you and G to answer this real quick, and then Bo will get to you, but yeah. both teams, Nuggets and Miami, extremely unselfish, willing to make that extra pass. And I go That's back huge. and I – Went through and watched a bunch of Cavs games over, and I was making mental notes and watching back. I'm not sure, and maybe because it's younger, maybe it's the regular season. I, I know it's not apples to apples. There wasn't a ton of times where Cleveland seemed willing just to make that extra pass to get a good shot, pass up on that, and get a great shot. That's yeah. not true. That's okay. not true. Okay. That one in the Knicks game, Darius Garland was the one that got everybody. He was the one that was doing that. He was the only one that was actually. But he was the only one. So that's, that's, one that's guy. That's what I'm saying. But at the end uh, of the day, Mike's right. <clears throat> he's Mike, right what he's saying for sure. Those teams are completely unselfish, and that's a re, uh, that's a big. Now, LeBron went to the finals a million times, and he did it's a lot of dribble, dribble, way. dribble. It's not the only way. But right. I'm just saying, those teams. It was so obvious watching as someone who played and, and loves basketball. Yeah. It didn't matter if it was Jokic passing up a good shot, Murray, even say, Michael he, Porter Jr., who sometimes he, has the pass button broken. Yeah. was making an extra pass to Christian Brown in the corner for an open. Also, it feels like Miami and Denver kind of play positionless to some degree. You know, and, like, and they have everybody. Offense. Adebayo and Jokic bring up the ball. Well, right. I mean, you got two. You got two dudes that's really good at passing. Like, yeah, Jokic gets the triple double or the double double, but Jamal Murray was getting ten assists a game too. So yes. you got two unselfish guys, and right. for it to come from obviously the point guard's responsibility is to facilitate, but to come from the center. That's the part that right. was not like, why I did not expect that. And that's why they're going to be hard to beat. Go ahead, Mike. Much easier said than done to find a center who can do that, too. So yeah. they're, they're the real unicorns, not necessarily what we think. Uh, we're yeah. going to get to your Little League package, but before we do that, you guys are coming up on the playoffs for Swinging Door team. So is the USFL Boogie and the Pittsburgh Maulers are playing this weekend in Canton in the playoffs. Check them out. Get your tickets at USFL.com. Should be fun for everyone. Bull, do you want to set up? What's going to come, or should I, I set it up for you and just let this? Well, I'll, rip? I'll set it up. You want to put? Can we put a camera on the kids? Yeah. So they're all here. Steve will get a shot of the kids. We yeah. have a full studio audience. Maybe the most, the biggest studio audience <laughs> here we've we ever go. had. <laughs> There's 12 kids. 11, 11 of these guys, including my son, are on the team this year. Sam's here too. Where's Sam? There's Sam. Sam was on my team last year. His brother's <laughs> on my team this year. <laughs> And they're a great bunch of boys, and they stayed quiet the whole hour. <laughs> they yeah, did. Right? to them. They They've did a great awesome. job. I don't know how y'all did that. And, and some of their parents are here, too, <laughs> maybe regretting after what they first walked into in the first 10 minutes. Uh, but so, you know, it's been a long season. We've been practicing for months. We've been playing for months. Last night, Mikey came down with the camera. He mic'd me up. And he, you know, we had an exciting game. Unfortunately, well, I'll, I'll let you find out in the video. Here we go. This is Coach Bull, mic'd up like you've never seen him before. Oh, we are three and nine on the season. Three and nine. We're this playing much better at the end of the season. The team we're playing is also three and nine, so it's a big game. One, two, three. Happy. We want you swinging the bat. Yeah, Reef, oh, go. Oh, go, Reef, keep going. Go, 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 go to third. Go to third. Go, Reef, go. Going to fly around the bases. Keep going, Reef. Go, go, go. Ooh. 
Watch. Drop the ball. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. He's just flying around those bases. It made me nervous. I thought he was close to play though. He had held on to the ball. Run! Go, go, go! Go! Look at that. A two-run single. That's right, buddy. All right. First pitch, I want you to go. Even if he catches it. As soon as it reaches home plate, I'll tell you when to go. Go, 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 go. Don't look, don't look, don't look. Good hustle, Aaron. I loved it. We were very aggressive that inning. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Don't lob it in there. Come on, throw it. Go, 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 go. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Step on the base. Yes. Yes. Nice play. <laughs> Let's go. We ready to hit? Yeah. Are we ready to hit? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, there you go, Ben. Hustle, Ben, hustle. All right, stay there. Swing it all the way. Don't just put the bat here. Swing it all the way. Go. Go home, Josh, go home. Don't look, don't look, go. Go, Josh, go. Go, don't look. Stop looking. <laughs> Next time you're on the bases, wait, you've got to stop looking. You, you look like four times. All right, just run. We'll tell you what to do, OK? But I'm proud of you for swinging the bat. I'm very proud of you. You should be proud of yourself. I want you to help lead the energy in this in this dugout. You hear me? Hey, Ben. You need to get out of the city without any more damage. Do the best you can, all right? Throw it hard. Make sure you follow through, okay? Bend that back at the end. Let's go. That's it, Ben. Nice, Ben. Aaron, you're at third. Ten. <laughs> you almost killed me there. You almost got taken out. You almost killed me. <laughs> Reef, what happened, Reef? I thought we were buddies. Twice, uh, yeah. Same spot. Again. Again. This is it. This is the last inning. We're down two runs. We get two, we tie. We get three, we win. We can walk it off. Come on, let's do it. Everybody, hands in. Hands in. Come on. If you're going to go down, go down swinging. Go. Go, Everett. Ah, good game. Good game. Good game. Nice pitching, kiddo. I know it stinks to lose, but there's, you know, what are you gonna do? Somebody's gotta lose, it's a bummer. It pisses me off too. Well, I'm sorry, I shouldn't use that language, but it, it bums me out too. One, two, three, SC. SC. And there they are. <laughs> so, <laughs> unfortunately, we lost a, a, a heartbreaker yesterday, but we're learning a, a lot of important lessons, and these boys are great. I am having a ball coaching them. They're an excellent bunch of boys. They're a lot of fun. They play hard. They hustle. They all have a good attitude. And most importantly, they're great teammates. They, they cheer for each other. They're nice to each other. And too often, we, we don't. We see kids being not nice to each other. So yeah. I'm very proud of all of them. I like the morale, man. They all definitely was all into the game. Yeah. And it was a bummer, though, because we got off to a good I, It start. was. Uh, <laughs> I was sitting here just cheering. I was and like, when <laughs> Reef hit that ball in the last inning, I thought that was going to get through. It would have made it 7-6. And then who would have been up next? Your two Either, hitter. I think Tyler. Who was second? Dylan, you second. Yeah. When is the next game? Next game's tonight. Okay. Uh, Joey's going to pitch for us. Where's Joey? I don't see him. All right. Okay. Oh, there he is. Throw Lefty the or righty? Heat. He's a righty. <laughs> right. And it's his last game because his family's going on vacation, so he's going to miss the rest of the season. Unless we get to the World Series. We got <laughs> That's right. So, hopefully. So, there you go. So, they did a great job. So we had a lot of fun. And Mike did a great job. With, he had a – that was a great job uh, staying with Reef when he hit this home run. No, no, don't give him no credit because he didn't He didn't stay with me. He didn't I stay. had a broken camera I don't last year. Care. Tyrus has somehow made I don't this little situation. Yeah. What, what happened Tyrus, with him? Tyrus, Tyrus, Tyrus has broken his – No, side. because Mikey yeah. was there to display how athletic I am and how I could have been pro. His he, camera was, he, was that, not that, very that, good. That, it was so – the catch was so beautiful that <laughs> – it would have been. Was awesome. it that beautiful? Was it a tough play? It was. It was a good play. It, it legitimately <laughs> See, was a good play. And, no. and we'll never know. Nobody yeah. will never know. He act, he act like he Griffey. I mean, my God. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Junior, Junior. I'm just telling you. The third. Uh, Mike did it. He did an excellent <laughs> job putting, to get, including me going. Oh. <laughs> that was there, funny. There was one where you you said. Uh, a word that I know you wouldn't say around any of the kids. Yeah. And I, it was so funny. I'll, I'll show you after. I yeah, wanted don't to put, put it in. Glad you didn't put I didn't that put in it in, but it's just you by yourself in the dugout going, bleep. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> bleep. Right, so right, right. Anyway, <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, but we're going to come back out there tonight. Tonight we're playing the team that I think has the best record in the league. Yeah. 
So it's a big chance. See, I like the confidence. Like, yeah. Very good. Very good. That's half the battle right That's there. It. Believing so we're, we're, that we're you can do confident, it. confident. And we know our best baseball is ahead of us. So we're, we're excited about tonight's game. We're excited that Mike came down. There was a couple of good, really nice fielding plays. Yeah. yeah which is where our, I, I'd say as a team, our fielding, our hitting has gotten better at the season. But our fielding has gotten a million times better from where we were in the beginning of the year. We made a lot of great plays yesterday. Reef and Joey in particular made great plays. And Ben is like a, a vacuum at first base, catched everything. Uh, Joey made one really nice play where it tipped off. Was it Tyler? Was it off your glove, Tyler? And then Joey caught it and stepped on second base to beat the runner. So our defense is really excellent right now well, defense was on point last night it was I mean, and i wish i could have got a couple more shots of defense i was trying to get you reacting yeah it's yeah, tough yeah. to do the swing but i thought it came out good and i'm, I'm thank you for letting us come out there and yeah. uh hang out so and, we had a good and, time and so playoff seating um if you win tonight what's no, we're, the, we're gonna be the four seed okay no matter what happens in these last three games and we will play the top seed which will either be ameriprise who's the team we're playing tonight or mitchell's O'Shea's in the other division. Mitchell's will be is the other team that might be uh, the one seed. They're pretty close for the top spot in Ooh. our division. Yeah. And we will play one of those teams on July 3rd. We'll see you for a couple of minutes in overtime. 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 overtime.